look at all these characters. Someone on YouTube. Yes, I'll upload it onto YouTube. Someone on YouTube was like, love your videos, Elkabat, if you want the deets. Was like, love your videos. Do you have any interest in making tier lists for SF4 Ultras or SF5 V Trigger slash skills in the same style as your 3S Supers tier list? Would be dope. That video was pretty easy to make and uh, got a lot of clicks. I think people really like tier list videos. Um, so I read that comment and I was like, yeah, that sounds like really easy content for me to make and people will probably enjoy it. So I threw together a little tier list of my own. I didn't put too much thought into it, but I put some. And then I chucked it onto um, Twitter, which was maybe a mistake, but also very helpful. And um, I basically got crucified for all my opinions. Um, so I took into account the various opinions that they had, and I mishmashed them with my opinions. And now I think I've got a better tier list. I, ch I put more thought into some of the things they were saying. Um, generally, there were a lot of things I expected people to take contention uh, against. How do you say that? But um, actually, it was like some, some things I thought were kind of weird, but no one challenged them. And then other things that I literally didn't think about at all. Everyone was like, holy shit, how the fuck would you put this here? And, um, you know, uh, I got to read all of them and form some, form some opinions based on, like, you know, uh, obvious source spots. Anyway, um, SF5, coming to a close, this is like the best possible time to make a, a trigger tier list, because it's still fresh in everyone's mind, but it's probably, like, everyone's had enough time to develop most of the stuff that's going to happen with all these triggers, so most of the triggers have had at least, like, several specialists, you know, hopefully. Um, anyway, um, this is just for fun. I'm not a pro. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel. Uh, I do know how all these triggers work pretty well, but there might be like, you know, one or two things I forget. And also it's kind of a subjective matter anyway. So, you know, please don't be offended if I put something somewhere where you wouldn't ever put it. Um, but let's just go through them all and have a good time. And if you see something that you think is crazy, you know, leave a comment, foster some discussion, whatever. Enjoy yourselves. This is all for fun. Um, well, so there's, there's 90 triggers in this game. We This list I've got only goes up to um, Season 5 start, so it doesn't have the Season 5 characters. It's Oro, Rose, Dan, Akira, Luke. So um, uh, I'll just say them. But until then, the characters down here all seem to be arranged alphabetically, so I'm just going to go through them alphabetically. And I'm not going to order them within each tier, because that gets really complex really fast. Although I probably could do something like that, I don't know if it would be good. And I'm going to treat each trigger... I'm going to take into consideration uh, if it's a 2-bar, 3-bar trigger. Because 3-bar triggers are almost flat better than 2-bar triggers in a vacuum, but the fact that 2-bar triggers are cheaper means you can get them up faster and you can potentially get 2 per round. Um, so usually in practice, one and two bar triggers are often fairly balanced against each other. I'm going to try not to balance the characters two triggers against each other. Like, just because Oro VT1 is way worse than his VT2. Like, I try to think about, like, what if another character had Oro's VT1 or something like that, or how, how much better is Oro VT1 versus Oro before trigger. So I don't think Oro's VT1 is the worst trigger in the game, but it's, like, the most outclassed trigger in the game. Or, like, it's up there. Maybe, like, Kimmy VT2 is the most outclassed trigger in the game, or maybe, like, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, what else? I'll just do the the, the five characters that aren't, aren't on this list. I'll just do them at the end, but until then, we'll go alphabetically, so it'll be super easy. I'm kind of judging them in a vacuum. You have to judge them on what the character's tools are to activate. Like, if you have, like, Sagat VT1, like, being able to do that from a fireball is very nice for that trigger. Just fireball activate. But, like, you know, Zangief doesn't have a fireball, so you can't just give... Zangief, Saga VT1. So I'm not. I'm doing it based on how it improves the character compared to how the character was before you activate, basically. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So how much better does the character get when the trigger's on? I guess. So we're going to try, you know. Um, What else? Is there anything else I should go over? I think that's about it. I think we can just jump in. Yeah, I'm posting it on YouTube. 
the reason I'm streaming it, I wasn't going to stream it. I was just going to do it in one long take. But I think with a stream, I get feedback on screen. So we can enjoy that if I say some dumb shit. And also, um, uh, there's no danger of me recording a long video and then the, the recording software just shitting itself, which has happened to me before and it fucking sucks. Okay. Uh, we're going to be free balling this. Uh, hopefully, you know, I can come up with a decent amount of stuff for each trigger. I hope I don't just glance over any of them. Um, Abigail VT1. Uh, he can charge all his fierce buttons. I'll try and I'll try and just explain what each one is in case you're not super familiar with SF5 and you're just watching this. Um, it's. I was thinking. <laughs> that's actually. That's 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 good that you said that because I was I was gonna dance around that without saying it and reading it made me realize it. Um, Abigail charges his fierce buttons. He gets four different fierce buttons that he can charge, like two command animals and stand fierce and, and down fierce. And when you charge them, you get way higher damage and then some kind of unique juggle options. Uh, there's not a lot of combos into them. There are a few. They can combo into each other. Like you can do a charge forward fierce until like a charge down fierce or something like that. Um, you've got EX command grab into charge back fierce. You've got, you know, you've got a few things. You've got various routes into them. Uh, charge stand fierce into charge back fierce. Charge back fierce into itself. Um, like the charge back fierce TC into itself. Um... It also has Guard Crush if you fully charge it. Um, I think it was one of the best triggers before. Uh, the damage is insane. It's like really high. It's some of the highest damage in the whole game from Abigail BT1. If you can actually get like a Charge Stand Fierce in a in a real match setting, you can just fuck someone up. But unfortunately, one of the only settings for that is um, like a Crush Counter Fierce. So it's or like a DP Punish or something like that. Yeah, he he, he can just annihilate you. Um, the Guard Crush used to be really good. But it was hurt a lot by V-Shift. But it's not like the opponent always has V-Shift. Even just talking about it right now, I put it in C in my initial list. I made an initial list for Twitter, as I said. Um, and really, just talking about it kind of makes me feel like it might be B. I think it's worse than his VT2, but it is kind of interesting. It's really good in punishes. The neutral's okay, because you can use the armor and stuff. Um, the guard crush is okay. It just depends on whether the opponent has a... Uh, a V-Shift or, you know, because V-Shift is kind of like a hard counter to it. Um, but there aren't that many combos into it, whereas VT2, you can get kind of thrust into any Abigail combo you want. It's hard. I'm, I want to put it in B. I want to put it in C. There's going to be a lot where it's like between two. Even that might be a little low. I'm going to put it in B. Eh, eh it's hard. <laughs> I'm going to put it in B. We'll come back to it. I think it, I, the thing is, it's you know, it does have some neutral use. It does make Abigail stronger, you know. Um, and it, the EX command grab combos are like as good as they ever were, albeit they're a little bit nerfed in damage. Um, but it's it's worse than it was in like the earlier days. B minus, sure. I could make a B minus right now, but I don't really want to. Um, Abigail VT two. Uh, also has a guard, it's a, a tackle special move, he can, it goes like full screen, you can charge it and it guard breaks. Um, it super cancels too. Uh, you can cancel it to it from special moves on like VT1, and the damage is actually really high, even from like a pretty scaled combo, it adds like 100 damage on like any combo you have. Uh, and you can just use it raw from various things, so it's, it's really strong. And e EX, any Abigail punch, but also especially EX Abigail punch, you get the level 2 version, which is quite beefy in combos. Um, so it's really easy to use like that. In terms of neutral, you've got the guard crush stuff, but it is, it's kind of like a knowledge check because the punish after V shift is kind of weird. Um, but you can just V shift it. So that's, you know, a little hit. Um, is it safe? I feel strange asking a question like that. I feel like it's safe, but like, I don't want to, <laughs> I suddenly can't remember. It's very tall. So it's actually pretty hard to jump over. I feel like it's safe, but I don't want to just say that. Uh, you can throw out Abigail out of the tackle. It's hard. Because he does travel pretty fast, but you can just grab him right when he's next to you. It's not my preferred method of dealing with it. I'd rather try and jump over it. I'd rather V-Shift it. If I have V-Shift, I'd rather do that. Does Geef, like, armor one hit and then grab it? That's pretty funny. I think it's it's good because you can just... um You can combo it from anything. Yeah, level one minus two. Uh, the range is big. The damage is big. Um, you do have the Guard Crush stuff, but you're not relying on the Guard Crush stuff. Uh, and then if you combo into Super, it does, 
like huge damage. Like massive damage. Abigail just has really high damage on both his triggers. This one I'm going to put in B as well. But it's a higher B. But I'm not going to order them in H tier, so I'm just going to put them both in B, and you guys are just going to have to deal with that. But like this one's like on the A cusp, I think. And this one's on like the C cusp. Well, I think this one's kind of more like a solid B. But that's just my opinion. Um, Akuma VT1. This probably used to be an S, but then they nerfed it repeatedly. Like the air fireball now costs a lot more than it used to, but the air fireball used to be just like kind of a free approach. And then like also if you instant air it, it was like, you know, it would just hit and then he would be able to combo out of it on the ground. It was like really nice. Um, the upgraded DP is pretty good. Good range, good speed. Uh, really high damage. Uh, some side swap stuff on your activation combo if you want. Actually, side swap stuff in general, but particularly on your activation, it's very easy to do. Uh, the fireball buff is also really good too. You get the launching fireballs that are more plus on block. Um, well, you know, actually, I think they're plus on block, I think. But the regular, Akuma's regular fireball is actually outright unsafe depending on how you land it. Um, but that's, that's, it just makes Akuma a much better character by improving his special moves. And then the demon is kind of icing on the cake because Akuma has a lot of really good demon setups, but you don't even really need to use it. You can just still... I put it into A on my tier list originally, and I think it's I think it's solidly A. I, I, what, it was S. In like Season 1 era, it was S. But I it was nerfed a little bit by V-Shift. It was nerfed a little bit by just nerfs. It was nerfed a lot by just nerfs. And it's still pace-defining. Okay, so the really big thing I want to say... It helps us... Footsie, the, the, the thing we're going to be considering with basically all these is does it help their footsies? Does it help their damage? Um, and does it kind of like give them continuous pressure if you've got it on? And for Akuma, that's like yes to all three. So it's a really good trigger. Yes, I'll upload it to YouTube. Um, VT2, I originally put this into C. <laughs> the thing about it is that I think it, it does add quite a lot of damage to, well, it adds okay damage, pretty good damage to pretty much any combo. Um, it's like you can cancel your uh, non-cancelable normals or your regular specials into EX specials is basically the effect. And it's you can just stick it into any combo. The damage is okay, and you can use a couple of them in the same combo. So you can go into EX Air Tatsu, into EX Air Fireball, or something like that. Or like EX Steam Flip into the stuff, or into Uppercut. Um, the thing about it that's kind of interesting is you've got some neutral use with like Fireball EX Steam Flip or like uh, Red Fireball EX Steam Flip. You've got some kind of shenanigans with that uh, that can be kind of like free mix-ups depending on the range from the opponent and what the opponent does. So there's some novelty there. Um, there's a lot of tech for it and I haven't really seen that many Akuma players use it. So I kind of just donked it onto C without thinking. But several people on Twitter were like, actually, this is there's a lot of... There's a lot of... Uh, depth to this. It's got potential. So I'm trusting those people. So I'm using Donk it into B, but it's possible that it's A-worthy. Could be A-worthy, but you have to know more about it than me. Um. Oh yeah, you can you can do some crazy chip stuff, because you can get very long block strings out of it with this EX, EX Fireball stuff. No, I mean, Twitter can be right. There are good players who use Twitter. Um, Alex's triggers... Uh, VT1 gives him like a lariat, like a like a running clothesline, uh, and then he parries if he gets hit during it, and if he fully charges it, it guard breaks. You can stick it into combos, but it only cancels from normals. It doesn't cancel from special moves. Um, but it, you can cancel into it from like Crutch Fierce and get a juggle and stuff too. So it, it fits into some of his combos. It's not as combo friendly as his other one. But um, the parry is kind of interesting. It's like a um, parry anything kind of attack, and then you get some trigger time back after you parry something. So you can use that to kind of do some weird things. Like, obviously you can parry stuff like V-Reversal, or, uh, uh, I don't know, V-Break, and stuff like that. Um, it, the Guard Crush probably nerfed by V-Shift. I mean, you can just hold down back, and then once he gets to the Guard Crush level, you can V-Shift, and then that just probably hard counters it. Um, I haven't even... <laughs> I haven't actually fought an Alex player who used VT1 since, since the final patch, so... You know, I haven't had really a chance to play around with that. It used to be that he would be able to charge it and then try and time his release with your jump or whatever you were going to do. Um, I think it's still pretty decent for his combos, and I think the there's still a lot of depth to it with the 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 parry. There's still some interesting things you can do with the parry. Um, I'm going to put it in B. Yeah, almost always they just release it early, which is, you know... If you get Guard Crush, you already have 60% scaling, so... 
Um, just allowing yourself to get card crushed isn't that bad. But the fact that it's unsafe on block really hurts it. Um, I don't know that much to say about it. I think it's got more depth than his VT2, but I think it's worse. Um, Alex VT2. Uh, he can cancel the normals or all the special moves into grabs. Um, there is neutral use to it. Like, you've got low forward into the jumping grab. Uh, so you get, like, a, con a conversion out of low forward. It's it's okay, but it's not great because the jumping grab doesn't even hit crouching opponents. So, like, if you just if someone's just crouching and gets hit, you whiff your grab and you die. Um, the really nice thing about it is if you end combos with it, like, if you do, like, a chop into the, into the down plus grab follow-up, uh, you get Oki. Yeah, I think you get Oki off of both of them. And um, the Oki that Alex gets, but particularly the the one where he, he sleeper holds you, uh, it's really crazy to get momentum off of some stuff, like a knockdown plus momentum off of some stuff that normally Alex gets nothing. Like, if you just end a combo and flash drop, if you do stand strong, stand jab, light flash drop, like, your combo normally just ends there. But if you get the sleeper hold and then a meaty lariat, like, the world opens up. So it's really good to just as a combo ender. Normally, I would put combo ender triggers lower, but this is like one of the better combo ender triggers in the game. Oh yeah, and this this damage and stun for both of them are quite high. Um, so you get some you get some good momentum, and momentum is really important for Alex because if he actually opens you up, he gets another sleeper hold and more momentum. And Alex, you know, with momentum is a very terrifying character because his mix up is quite good. Um, but you can't go into super. Unlike VT1, so that's a teeny tiny nerf. Oh, VT1 offers some repositioning stuff too, which is novel but not always good. Uh, you get a lot of uses of VT2. It's like three uses, isn't it? It's quite you get you get a lot of you get a lot of payoff for it. Um, I thought about putting it into A, but then Prototype on Twitter literally told me he thought it was B, and I was just like, okay, if Prototype thinks it's B, then maybe it's B. Prototype knows Alex better than me. Um, Birdie, I put this in B. Birdie BT1, and then a few people were like, actually, I think this is A-worthy, and I understand. It gives Birdie increased walk speed, uh, and then improved properties on Bullhead and Bullhorn, and maybe something else? I don't remember. Um, the Bullhead, you get the frame 3 armor on all of them, which can be really good for the... well, for all of them. And you also they're also much faster. Like, they have hits on the way in instead of just hits once they connect. Like, once they finish. So... Bullheads are way better. They're theoretically more punishable. They're all minus nine. But depending on spacing, depending on what character you're fighting, they can actually be pretty safe, which is which is pretty crazy. Oh yeah, and just extra damage. There we go. That's the thing I was forgetting. Um that's that's you know, that's big. Getting a lot of extra damage is really nice. Um and then on I think on Bullhorn you get frame one armor, which is really good. And I think you get the frame one armor even for non EX, right? He has frame one armor somewhere. I don't think they ever took that out. Or maybe they took it out and put it back in. There's like something kind of nice somewhere out there. Frame 1 armor, non EX bullhorn, I think. I think the bull head is frame 3. Um but that's that's good too, you know. Having people act like you're scrubby of your reverse, but you know, having a good reverse is kind of nice. Um we'll chuck that into We'll chuck that into A. I put it in B originally, but I think it could be A. Most birdie I've seen like uh, I see birdie players pick two, I see beardy players pick one, it's split. Birdie players aren't sure which one's better. Um Yeah, it's true. Birdie doesn't have any kind of trigger consumption kind of stuff, it just goes down slowly. Uh Birdie VT two gets two new chain specials. One of them pulls the opponent in and is plus, but it's pretty hard to combo into. It only combos from like EX Bullhead or uh his heavy normals. And then the other one combos from a lot of stuff, but it ends your combo and just gives you Oki. But Oki is good, you know? Brady's got a command grab. He's got good normals. Oki is, pays off nicely for him. Um, oh, wait. It does use it? What the fuck? I'm just high. Um, let me think. Uh, the activation is a lot worse than VT2, VT1. But both of Birdie's activations fucking suck. They're, like, weirdly bad. They're kind of cool because they both have hitboxes, and VT1 in particular has recovery fast enough that you can combo the juggle into the flame and then combo out of it. Um, and that doesn't ask ton of damage. It used to do even more. Um, BT2, once the flame hits, I don't think there's any kind of juggle. The combo just ends because the recovery of the, th the trigger is so high. But activating on block fucking sucks. Like, VT1 is pretty hard to activate on block. There's only, like, Zonk Activate, which is still minus, but at least safe. 
Um, but VT2, like, even Zonk activates, like, minus 20 or something. It's, like, it's bad. It's really hard to activate if you don't get a hit. Um, the straight chain is really good. Ever since, ever since like, uh, EX Bull had straight chain, you just, it's not too hard to combo into, and then the reward on a hit is really high. You get really good damage from, like, Crouch Fierce into Heavy Chain. You get, like, you know, meaty setups if you want those. Um... And then you can you can end in like a bullhead and then a low chain if you want use two trigger uses something like that is very strong. I put this in B, but again a lot of birdies pick it. So if there's an A minus, I'd probably just chuck them both into A minus. I'm gonna put it in B. It could be A worthy. Okay, it's somewhere here. Okay, it's one or the other. I don't know which. If you think it's A, it's A. If you think it's B, it's B. All right, let's not worry about it too much. I do think it's nice, though. I think Birdie appreciates the Oki. The damage is pretty good, too. The damage is really good for the straight one. It's only kind of good for the low one. A lot of decent neutral use, though. Because it pulls the opponent in even on even on block. The straight one is pretty good. Uh, Bison VT1. Um, why is Bison VT2 all the way over there? Why'd they move it? Did I do that? Uh, Bison VT1 uh, improves all his specials, and it lets him cancel into EX moves from his regular specials. Um, is super good for meter dumping. He can land, like, one errant hit. And Bison has some safe specials. He can land one errant hit and then just burn a bunch of EX and just kill you. Um, it gives you a lot of, like, weird stuff from his from his special moves. Like, his Devil's Reverse gets the cross up, and his dash gets the, the dash through. Uh, so you got a lot of gimmick value that's very strong at low-level play. But it's not like it just drops off at high level play. Like the dash having a bigger distance, more invincibility is still good at pro level. <laughs> it's not like it just falls off. Um, you also don't need to charge, and not needing to charge is pretty tricky and pretty good. You can do like, a, well, you need to charge, but you don't need to charge and cancels. So you can do like dash through into stand short, and then you can cancel that to light blast, well, BT1 blast, and you don't need to have charge for that. So that's, you know, very strong that you can just get a cross through and then just do a special cancel anyway. And there are some other scenarios where Bison not needing charge is pretty useful. So I'm going to put this into A. Um, I don't know if it's... Uh, I, th I feel like it's A. Maybe someone will disagree. I think it's pretty strong. Yeah, you get the uh, the empty cancels a lot more easily. Not having to charge for each one. VT2, I put in S. Yeah, and uh, there was like one person who didn't like that. But... Um, I don't know. It gives him a command grab, and then it gives him Psycho Crusher. The command grab, I think, is is crazy. First of all, I don't think a character like Bison should have a command grab in the first place. It does have the normal risk of a command grab, where you can jump out of it or be shifted or something like that. Uh, the thing that really changes it from other command grabs, the damage isn't super high, but it puts that bomb on them, and then you uh, get so much life out of that bomb. Because you have the detonate whenever you want, so you can do like stuff like stand medium kick detonate and get a huge combo out of stand medium kick. You can get huge combos out of any successful confirm can lead to like scissor kick it to detonate for like a giant combo. Um, you get insane block strings with like the detonate on block, and you already have crazy block strings with bison in general. Um, what else? Uh, this. Devil's Reverse, you can wait for the bomb to almost explode and then trick people with, like, you know, uh, Devil's Reverse stuff or, like, jump over stuff or, like, throw mix-ups. Like, if, if, and if the bomb detonates, like, right as you pass over someone or something like that with some unseeable mix-ups. Um, Bison still gets a combo out of it. He can still, like, you know, jump strong strong or something like that. Yeah, and it's very plus on block, so you get a mix-up even if nothing pans out. I think it's really strong. I put it in S. It could be A. I think it's S. I think it's really good. Oh, it lasts a really long time, too. Oh, for the Psycho Crusher, it's got some neutral use as well. Like, you can use it as, like, a... I think you can space it to be safe. You can go through fireballs with it or something like that. Um, you can stick it at the end of any combo, which is really nice. Like, you can just do, like, a like a scissor kick and then a... If it hits, do, like, a Psycho Crusher cancel and then even a super cancel from that if you want. And you can do that after bomb combos, too. So, like, Bison just gets really long combos. Yeah, and then you can do it as like a meaty. There's like some weird stuff. You can you can get like cross up versions. Um, there's some tricks to it, and then that also works with the the bomb, I guess. Um, what else? I guess that's it for Bison. It's got it's 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 really good for a two bar trigger. It like feels like it should be a three bar trigger. That being said, you are you do have to land the command grab to kind of unlock the trigger. Like, 
If you don't, if you if the opponent just like reads your command grab, you get nothing. You get uh, you eat a jumping combo. Um, so there's there's a you know it's it's kind of momentum oriented, but you know, uh, Bison with all his plus frames with all his ways to make you block, having a command grab is insane. Blanca VT one, um, it improves all of his special moves. You get like electricity, gets like a combo out of it, and it's plus two on block. Uh, the pushback makes it kind of hard to abuse the plus two. Uh, Blanca Ball is safe against everyone. Like, some characters can just do, on all Blanca Ball versions, can do, like, a reversal dash on thing or reversal supers, stuff like that. Uh, Blanca Ball with VT1 is a lot harder to punish, and it goes through fireballs for, like, the whole thing. And then it also gets a juggle after it hits. Uh, the up ball becomes a true meteorless one-frame reversal. That's pretty rare. There's only a few of those in the game. So, you know, you can just be in trigger and you do the up ball, and the opponent... You know, <laughs> you you hit them even if you have no bar, so it's it's pretty good. Um, I think the the rainbow roll I think also becomes harder to anti air. You get a little bit more steering out of it, and I think it has a better hitbox coming down. I think you can get cross up versions. The problem with the rainbow roll is that it well the problem with the BT one in general is that all of your specials use like a third of the trigger time, and it's hard to preserve that. Like, if you're using Rainbow Roll, you're hoping it works, and if it doesn't work, there's just a third of your trigger time gone, but, you know, most triggers are like that, so it's not a huge deal. Um, I put it in B. I don't think it's crazy, but I think it's very workable. I think it's quite good. Um, I think it's okay. Oh, there's the Ground Shape Roll, too. I didn't even think about that. It technically works as a Guard Break, but I've never seen anyone get the Guard Break in a real match setting. What you usually get out of it is either a combo from his various other VT1 specials, or... Uh, empty cancel, buffered cancel from stuff like Crouch Fierce or stuff like that, buttons. Um, and it's quite good for both of those, and you can combo into super. You can combo like every single special move into super with VT1 Blanca. Um, ground Shape Roll's not bad, though. And you can combo a few of those trigger attacks in a row, which is really nice. You can do stuff like EX or VT1 Electricity, VT1 like Dash, VT1 Uppercut, or Ground Shape Roll or something like that. So, you, you know, there's a lot of free form. You can spend as much of it as you want to. But you can't really avoid spending it, it's the one downside, I think. Oh, uh, they did make it, they did buff it last patch where you could combo a lot of the enders into down towards Fierce, which preserves uses, I guess. So that's that's something. Uh, VT2. Typically these days, I see Blanca's picking VT1. VT2 doesn't really feel any worse than it ever was. There was some gimmick value that's kind of fallen off because people are a lot better about blocking the um, uh, up ball stuff, the up ball zips now. Blanca gets zips out of his Blanca balls. Uh, you can do it from Rainbow Roll, but it's almost useless. Is quite good from his other Blanca, from his Blanca ball and his up ball though. From up ball, you get a downwards. Well, you can get three zips if you want and just take the damage, but you can also get a down towards zip and get your um, EX up ball, and that does really good damage. His one bar damage with VT2 is really good. Um, and then for light Blanca ball, you get like a plus two on block Blanca ball, and for heavy Blanca ball, you get like a minus two on block one. So you get safe Blanca ball for heavy and plus Blanca ball for light, and that's pretty obnoxious, and you can do it like three times. So. Um, Overall, a pretty good trigger, I think. Um, but the one bar damage is really good, and then the neutral use is pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Uh, there might be something else I'm forgetting. Cashing out is not very strong for like the meterless stuff. If you just do like a regular combo into three zips, it's not crazy. It can help you reposition. Like you've got like, you've got like certain like up ball into I think up towards into up into up back or something like that, and it gets like a cross up. You end up on the other side of the opponent. So you know, situationally, you can use that to reposition. Um, I'm going to put it into B. Kami VT1. I think this might have been an S trigger at some point. It might still be an S trigger. Um, it gives Kami basically her special moves turned into their EX versions. Um, I put it in A, I think. No, yeah, I put it in A in my little tier list. You think it's B or C? Because V-Shift? I thought V-Shift didn't hurt her that much. Because a lot of people aren't very good at reacting to it, I've noticed. A lot of people, when they're fighting Kami... Like, she jumps at them, and they V-shift on, like, a regular jump, and then they eat, like, a jump hard kick or something like that. Um, I don't think it fell off a cliff, but you're a very good Kami player, so I'm willing to... Um, I hear you. Uh, you get the... You get fireball punishes, but it's not like Kami was ever weak to fireballs. Um, the dive kick... Uh, the conversions aren't super strong if you use them from your activation combo, and a lot of people do that. Like, if you just do, like, say, medium kick activate, or low forward activate, and then just uppercut into dive kick, it's a lot more damaging than a low forward, but it's not very damaging. Uh, but if you actually land a, a V-trigger dive kick, it's, it's pretty strong. Um, mm, 
it does matter a lot because the main thing about it that makes it good is the is the dive kick. So if the V trigger dive kick is reactable, then that like really hits it because the uppercut is just extra damage. It is a true one frame reversal, just like Blanca. Uh, she has a meterless one frame reversal. Not a huge deal. It's kind of risky to do that. You're playing Kami. You have 900 health or whatever, 925. Um, so you know you take your life into your own hands to do something like that. But it is kind of nice to have. Uh, you can't react to the super cancel on, like, say, uh, Sakura, or who's another one? Dan. Certain characters have a true one-frame reversal where they can do a reaction super, but Kami has to do, like, an instant super cancel out of her invincible uppercut, which, you know, you don't get to choose. Um, is barely different from just wake-up super. 900? I don't know. I changed all the health values, like, a million times. It's hard to keep track of what's what. I thought it was 925, though. Is there no one 875 anymore? Because I thought... Yeah, okay, okay. 900. I'll put it in... Mm, people didn't like my A placement, but I couldn't tell if they liked it higher or lower. I think once upon a time it might have been S, but now there's been a little bit of power creep plus V-shift. I put it in A before, but if you think it's B... I don't know. Maybe it's B. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 like, hearing, hearing, hearing B from you, mm, that makes it seem kind of bad. KMVT2 is, is going right there in the bottom. Fuck it. Um, it gives her a dash cancel and a demon flip. Um, the demon flip is, is, it's got a very pure mix-up. You've got, like, a grab out of the demon flip that hits anyone standing and an overhead that hits anyone crouching. Um, the problem is that both of them lose to an anti-air. Um, so, like, you know, if you just try and do it raw, trying to hope for a mix-up, then she, you, you know, the opponent just hits you out of the air, which they would be doing anyway if you jumped. Um, I don't think, well, maybe it's the worst trigger in the game. I don't want to say that right out of the gate. No, Slayman's going to hit me with a quote treat. T a quote tweet. Slayman, you can't be here. You're going to hit me with some fucking, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to expose my bad takes. Just leave. Just quietly leave. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, the grab follow-up is really risky if they duck it. The kick follow-up is not that risky, but it's, like, minus, I think, on block. So, first of all, they can anti-air you. Second of all, I mean, I guess they could, like, V-shift or something to dodge the mix-up, too. Not that I would do that, necessarily. Um, it does go through fireballs, which is kind of novel, especially on activate, where it's faster. Um... You also have, I think, a combo from, like, stand hard kick, crush counter into into the kick. Oh, it's plus two? All right, I'm full of shit. Never mind. I thought it was minus two. All right. Get some points back. Could be C tier. Uh, I think the dash is a total meme. You only get, like, a plus frame dash on block after, like, crutch fears, I think. Right? Um, It's something... It's something... You, you'd, like... If, if it was more combo friendly, it would be really good. Especially if Kami could just do stuff like low forward, dash, grab, kind of mix-ups. But I think it's almost always minus, which really hurts it. Um, and the combos you can get with it on hit are not crazy. Like, I think from, like, Stain Fierce, you get, like, dash, low jab, back strong. You might just get back strong right away now. I don't remember. I think they buffed it at some point. They, like, tried to make this trigger better, but, like, no one... I've never seen anyone pick it in a real match. So it's a little bit hard to talk about, too. Uh, I think it's overly risky, is is the big thing. Uh, even though it's got maybe a slightly more pure mix-up than BT1. I don't think it offers like huge improvements to her damage. I don't think it offers huge improvements to her neutral. Still ass. Okay. Chun-Li BT1. Uh, you get extra hits on everything. You get extra frame advantage on everything. Uh, pretty good. It does improve Chun-Li's damage. It also gives her some new routes. Like You can do low, low jab, low forward, which is quite useful. You can do, like, uh, better stuff from Low Fierce. You can do Stand Strong Low Fierce. Um, her pressure gets a bit better, and she does get some new routes. Like, she gets the combo from the overhead. Uh, she gets stronger anti-airs. If you get, like, anti-air back hard, hard kick, you get, like, juggles. Uh, you get a few better confirming op uh, uh, options. You get, like, Stand Fierce. Um, you get combos out of Towards Ren House. Um, stuff like that is kind of nice. Um, it's definitely good. It kind of lasts too long to get two per round, but it's kind of too short to really get reliable damage. So it's kind of an ugly place with how long it lasts. 
Um, it's it's an upgrade, but it's nothing really crazy. I'd say it's probably like low end of B. But maybe, I don't know. I'll call it low end of B. <laughs> fun to use. I think about that sometimes. Sometimes triggers being fun, you know, is a big plus. There are certain triggers that I think are ass, but I think they're really fun to use. Like Honda. Well, I don't think Honda's VT2 is ass, but I think it's really fun. I think that's quite a good trigger. But it's a fun trigger. Where's a trigger that's bad but fun? But not VT2? That's not bad. That's a good trigger. There aren't that many bad triggers. Um, Chun Li VT2. She gets Kikosho. Uh, you can combo up from any poke. So just stuff like Stand Fierce and Stand Runhouse just combos into into Kikosho, and then she gets to juggle out of it into heavy heavy Kyoku Retsu Kyoku. Um, that's pretty good. Um, I put I put this one at the I put VT1 at the low end of B. This one's maybe A and maybe the high end of B. It's kind of hard for me to place. This is one of the ones I'm the least sure about. Um, yeah, you can you can get a couple of them in a combo. You've got guard break stuff, and unlike most guard break stuff in this game, it's actually possible to get Chun Li's guard breaks. There's some decent setups into them. Um, she gets like triple damage off of her pokes, especially if she uses an EX or a super. Um, I don't think Sagat's VTs are are that bad. I don't know. I think they're okay. I don't know if they're. I don't know what a Sagat would think. <laughs> Sagat typically surprises me with with. Um, how useful and how useless certain things are. Sometimes I think something on Sagat is good, and sometimes I think something on Sagat is bad. Anyway, um, this one's a really tricky one to rate. It does have neutral use because of the whiff cancel pokes into uh, Kikosho, and it's also safe. And then it's also got neutral use with the guard break stuff, but that's kind of more situational. It's got very good combo use with like the lightning legs into into Kikosho. It's maybe A. It's maybe B. Let's put it in A, but like it's it's the low end of A or maybe the high end of B, I think. If I was going to just rate it by myself, I would say it's somewhere in there. Vega. Um, Vega throws a Rose for VT1, and it launches the opponent, and then he gets a juggle. He can do sweep. He can do EX uh, off the wall. Flying Barcelona attack, as they call it. Um, and then he's also got an anti-air one. The anti-air one, they buffed. It's better than it used to be. I thought it was really bad before. I think ever since they buffed it, it's okay. It's workable. Uh, that plus the anti-fireball. Vega's anti-airs are kind of iffy. Vega's anti-fireballs are kind of iffy. So it patches up two pretty big holes in his kit. Well, not huge holes, but like, you know, he appreciates having uh, instant air uh, rose throw. Um, and it does lead to pretty good damage. I put it in C. It might be B. I think it's, it's better trigger. Um, it's a one and done, and the combos aren't huge. And the thing I really don't like about it is that... Oh, yeah, why, the, why is Vega here? Just pretend it's, it's Vega with a C. Okay, we're already putting him to C to, to match the, the trigger. Claw! Ah, oh, that's why. It's Claw. Claw then, Cody. Anyway, um, the thing I really don't like about it is that most of the good returns from the Rose Throw also um, use Super Meter. Like, either an EX or two EXs or a full Super. So it's like he has to completely resource dump to make it really rewarding. You wish it was just rewarding on its own. It's it's okay on its own. It's not super strong. A lot of the combos into it are really short. It might be B. There are meterless and metered combos into it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but it's mostly just good for... Like, you know, you can combo into it, but it's I would say the most useful thing it does is punish fireballs. Um, but I don't like that it's just it's just gone. I feel like for the one use, you should really get more damage out of it, or it should have two Rosos. But maybe it's B... Rose beats armor, so it's dumb. A uh, Zingy player would complain about that. Checks out. It is dumb. Vega VT2 is worse. I think this one's solidly C. Vega VT1, I could I could put into C or not. I could put it into B maybe. But this one this one feels like a C. Um, he gets a parry and he gets a launcher. The launcher is also a one and done. As soon as you use it, your trigger ends. I think. Uh, the parry leads to the launcher if it procs, but you get two parries. Um, Vega is super sorely in need of a defensive option, but a parry is like the worst one they could have given him. But it's because he's so in need of one, you appreciate anything. But the parry is kind of overly risky, you know? Like, you just wish it was a reversal. You just wish that towards towards plus trigger was just an armored attack or something like that. Um, combo into it is pretty strong. I think the combos into it are stronger than um, VT1 stuff. Um... You get pretty good damage returns, but the neutral use is 
basically limited to pokes canceled into the forward plus trigger or just the parry. And both of those are not super amazing in neutral. <laughs> they're okay. They're okay. They're okay. But I think it's a bit annoying. It's harder to land than the rose. It hurts it too. But the combos into it are really cool. So, you know, or the combos out of it, I guess. If you if you actually get it on a cornered opponent, you it's it's pretty cool looking. Uh, Cody has two of the better triggers in the game. I initially put one into A and two into B, but I think I've rectified it into putting both of them into A. I'm going to talk about both of them, don't worry. Uh, VT1 gives Cody a knife. Uh, you get a very obnoxious knife, though, fireball cancel, and it has pretty good returns on hit with, like, you know, uh, the juggles. And then it buffs all his punch normals. Well, it buffs is a bit strong. It does buff all his punch normals, but it mostly just changes all his punch normals. Like, they're they're better, but you lose his old good ones. So you just... Like, overall, I think it's better. But it's different. <laughs> you get nice anti-air combos out of the down fierce anti-air. Because it launches, so now you get, like... like Cody gets anti-air into Heavy Ruffian, which is really strong. Um, uh, what else? Everything is plus. Like, you have, like, an ass ton of extremely... Like, low strong, uh, stand fierce, all his jabs, whatever. You have, like, a, a fuck ton of plus frames everywhere. So you can just kind of press and press and press, and the opponent can't challenge it, like, at all. Um, and then you actually get some pretty weird, cool combos. You get some weird, like, knife links, like, low strong into stand jab and, like, stand fierce into, I think, also low strong or stuff. Um, stand fierce into jab. You get some links out of um, his various various normals that you can then combo. He gets a new special move. It's core second back punch, and then it, he swings a knife at you a bunch of times. It's good in that it's very easy to land, but it's bad in that... Um, it does a lot of... Uh, it takes a lot of trigger time to use. And you can cancel it to super, something like that. But the plus frame, the advancing stain fierce is really good. You get a TC that's really good for his damage. It's bad on block, but it's really good for, like, if you just get a punish, if you just get a jump in fierce over a fireball or something like that, you get, like, strong fierce into a cancel, you know? Uh, so Cody can do pretty good damage with it. And then the knife throw into juggle stuff is really strong, too. Yeah, rapid fire is... I think so, yeah. I think it's plus on block. But um, it takes so much trigger time that you'd prefer not to do that. The rapid fire, one kind of cool thing about it is that it combos from everything, even if it doesn't cancel. So like, or from any punch normal, I should say. All of the punch, all the knife at normals cancel to rapid fire. That's the core circle back punch. Um, so I think that's nice. It also, I think he has the biggest three frame normal in the game, right? Someone fact check me on that. I think a knife, one of the knife jabs is, is the game's biggest three frame normal, which is kind of novel. Not a huge deal, because there's not that much minus three stuff in SF. Uh, an SF5. But, you know, the biggest 3-frame normal in the game might also be the biggest 4-frame normal in the game. Is it 4? Oh, well, it's the biggest 4-frame normal in the game. I thought it was. I thought he had a 3-frame. Maybe he has a 3-frame and a huge 4-frame, and I'm just combining them in my head. Why did I think he had it? Well, a 3-frame doesn't really matter. Okay, well, I, I believe that. Okay, he's got the biggest 4-frame normal in the game. He's got some really long knife jab. I didn't really think about that. Uh, what else? That's kind of it for Cody. It's easy to kind of waste the, the trigger time, but it's very potent if you don't. And a lot of the Cody players these days know to just hit a bunch of knife normals. Oh. Wow. Sand. Uh, Cody VT2. I was too hard on this because people often pick knife these days, but like, okay, Cody gets a command grab and a rock toss and also two pipe swing special moves. Uh, sure, I'll do a V-Skill TRist. The command grab damage is fucking nuts if you get the just frame. And the just frame is not very hard to get. It's not actually just frame. It's like three frame window or something. I don't know how big it is, but it's not too hard. Um, but you get like Oki off of all of them. And you get like a cancel into his rock though off of all of them. So you get an Oki with like a mix up off of all of them. So not only is it super damaging, but it's super damaging with momentum. Um, that's I forgot about that. I actually forgot about the forward throw. I remember the Stain Fierce and the Crush Counter that builds trigger time, but I forgot about the fourth though. Um, the Rock is quite good. Um, it's You lose the Whirlwind, but the Rock, it's not really a Fireball tool. It is a Fireball, but you, it's not... Well, you can use it in Fireball Wars. It's just really strange to use in Fireball Wars. Like, you can throw the Rock and then hit it with the pipe, and it goes over Fireballs if you time it right. Or, like, under Fireballs if you time it right. Um, or through Fireballs if you time it right. Um, you've got some, it's, it's, it can anti-air, which is very unusual for a, for a 
fireball. It's not super strong until Cody hits it. And then you've got the stuff where you can hit the rock into the air and then uh, have it land on the opponent. That's actually surprisingly tricky in um, uh, uh, certain setups. Uh, the pipe does reflect fireballs. I think swinging the pipe costs nothing, but it reflects a fireball at cost trigger time. Something like that. Pretty sure. Uh, you can reflect any fireball with it. You can reflect like a super fireball if you're so inclined. But um, uh, I I don't think it's amazing for that. It does help in fireball wars in that way. And then the the pipe swing is really good for like zonk combos. Like you can do a zonk combo into a pipe swing, or even to a, a pipe swing into a straight pipe swing. You can do like sweep into pipe swing if you want. There's like a few different things you can do with the pipe swing. It's mostly to hit the rock, but you can use it to hit the opponent, and it's not bad for that. And then you get some new uh, fierce normals. You get like uh, crouch fierce at anti airs, and then you get a reaction juggle. It's not a cancel. Although I think it does cancel. Um, you get Stain Fierce with a Crush Counter. It's quite a good poke. Um, what else? Air Fierce goes really far. It's not a huge deal, but it's kind of nice. There's probably something else. Pipe. Uh, pipe. I definitely underrated Pipe when I put it in B. I didn't think very hard about it, but I think it's one of the better triggers in the game. It makes Cody a lot better. I think I nerfed it a little bit because it takes away Whirlwind, but doesn't really give you something that's quite the same in return. But you're not even trapped in with the Pipe anymore now that you can throw it, so... I think that's pretty strong. Uh, the single thing that everyone hated was my placement of Ed's VT1. And if I'm being honest, I barely thought about it. I thought about Ed's VT1. I was like, ah, I don't see Ed's pick that very often. And eh, I, I, it's basically, it's like Rashid's VT1, was, but worse. That's what I thought in my head. And then I just chucked it into C. And everyone was like, holy shit. Okay. And I, I'm like, holy shit too now. Because I was, I was swayed upon reading all the, all this stuff. Um, I... I've I usually just approach it and then block it whenever I see it, and I rarely try other other stuff. And usually when I see people getting lit up by it, um, they're doing stuff like trying to jump over it or you know, teching throws and getting owned like that. So uh, I think I probably do something that's generally the safest way to deal with it. But there's no truly safe way to deal with it. The big thing I thought about I was comparing it a lot to Rashid VT1 in my head, and for what it's worth, I put Rashid VT1 in A, and I think Ed's VT1. Could be A as well. I've been successfully swayed. I put it in C. That was I was high. Okay, I was just, I was simply high. Um, uh, the big thing about Ed VT one is that it's got so many hits. It's got like ten hits or something or nine hits. So you can like, you can't even walk into Ed and then block it and then be okay. Like he can dash you out of it and then grab you and then you still have to deal with the fireball because it's still coming towards you. Um. I, I mean, even Eds I play nowadays don't fucking pick VT1. I'm being honest. They always pick VT2, so I'm a little... Bit, I'm, I'm unexposed to it. Um, but the fact that it gets so many hits, you can, like, kind of, like... You can't really wear it out by just approaching it. Um, I, I thought... Of, I, the, one of the reasons I think it's worse than Rashid's... Well, I thought it was worse than Rashid's is that Ed's actual ability to mix you up with it uh, into, like, a... into a successful... I always thought about it, like, oh, it, like, if I want the fireball to hit... I have to open the opponent up, and my only options to open the opponent up are like a bad fuzzy guard jump short that doesn't even work on half the cast, or like throw mix ups, or uh, like what else? Where's where's the mix ups? Basically, I was like, where's my overhead? Uh, whereas Rashid has an overhead and has some funky cross up stuff, so he can get you surprised on the other side, stuff like that. So I was really unfair to it, but you can really, it's not hard at all to get one or several throws after Ed VT1 activate. That being said, it does kind of rely on you being mid-screen. Uh, Flicker is safe, and it's, Ed players don't need to think to use it, and also it has good range there. That's the reason Flicker's good. Um, in combos, it's... In the right context, it can be you can get some pretty strong combos out of it. If you get like repeated um, B-skill stuff, you can get some nice combos. Um... Oftentimes you'll just kind of get like a jump strong into a juggle, jump strong into low low B skill one or something like that, low B skill two. But there are situational like, combos that are really beefy. But if you just try and confirm into it, if you just try and do like, you know, launcher of some variety, fucking ex or uh, ex dive, and then like a BT one, usually those combos aren't super strong. But it's not about strong. This combo, this trigger is basically like pure, uh, pure neutral. Um, what else about it? I feel like I had something else about it. Is there anything else besides repeated repeated obnoxious throw mix-ups? 
it's really different from Rashid VT1 just because of the number of hits. Rashid VT1, if you block it, it's basically over. But Ed can push you out of it, and then he's still got like a six-hit trigger or something. Um, I definitely should have said B. When I made the proto tier list, I was like, ah, it's B or C, and then I put it into C. And what's annoying is my fucking notepad, when I was kind of thinking about things, I put it into... I put it into B, or... I put it in B, and then I put in parentheses, or C. And then everyone's like, holy shit, this is like an A trigger. And you're just, you know... You're high to put it in C. And I think they're probably right. I was high to put it in C. I'm going to trust Twitter on Ed. I'm going to put it into A. But if I was... With what I know about it, it's... I'd probably just put it into B because it's one and done. That's the only real gripe I have with it. But it's quite a lot of one and done. You know what I mean? You get decent mileage out of it, even though it's it's gone if, if Ed gets hit. Well, it's not gone if Ed gets hit, but it's gone if the opponent finds a way to avoid it, rather. Put it at the top of B. Eh, I don't have tops and bottoms in my tiers. Um, Ed VT2, I think I put it into A. I don't remember. Maybe I put it into B. I think it's A. I thought it over. I don't think anyone complained about that one. But a lot of people complained about Ed VT1. Um, it gives Ed basically new versions of his VS1, but better. You get insane block strings and some borderline guaranteed damage. Well, just straight up guaranteed damage, because he can do a bunch of white damage to you with block normals and then, like, fireball cancels and stuff. And then as soon as he gets a guard break, I think you lose all your white health. So he can just do... Even if you just block everything, you take like 100 damage in chip. Or like 150 or something. You take a lot of chip damage. Uh, but if any errant hit connects... Of course he can just grab you or something, so that's quite scary. But if any errant hit connects, if he gets like stand strong and you eat it, and he gets like down fierce fireball into Snatcher, um, you can take quite a lot of damage. That, that whole sequence does a ton, especially if he spends a super. Um, so it's, it's pretty rewarding on a hit and then on like and then in punish combos and stuff like that but then the neutral control is insane he basically it's basically his turn for like 15 seconds after he activates with the guard breaks and stuff he's basically just got non-stop plus frames until he feels like he doesn't want them anymore and it's very easy for him to preserve the trigger because he doesn't have to do like the snatcher stuff uh there are some ways to blow it up you can reshift it you can even backdash it actually um so certain cancels are kind of risky for him to go for if he just does them raw but most dead players know that better than the people Ed fights, so... I'm going to check into A. Some Ed players pick VS, uh, VT1, some Ed players pick VT2. I usually see two in online, but, you know, I I know that there are still dedicated Ed VT, VT1 users. The thing is, VT1 for Ed is so unique that you only get the experience in fighting it by um, fighting other Ed players. I mean, by actually... So, like, if you never fight Ed VT1, you can get lit up by it. That's that's nice. That's nice to hear. I'm not impressed by Falk's triggers. I put them both into C. I think I think there was at least one person who didn't like that. I thought it was. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, Falk VT1 gives her new fireballs. She's got like an air one that goes down and then bounces upward. It's a bunch of hits, so you can actually confirm out of it. Um, you get conversions from gunshot. You can do any any fireball into a trigger fireball or actually two trigger fireballs if you want. Um, they're pretty strong. They're not, like, super strong, actually. They're not... <laughs> her VT combos are not that strong. You can do it from VS1 as well, I think. Um, the air fireball is kind of annoying. It really depends on the matchup, how good it is. You get three uses, which is kind of good, but each individual use isn't super-duper impactful. Uh, I think no specific thing about it is that scary. I think the air fireball is probably the best part. The ground shots aren't bad at all, but they're a little bit redundant with a regular fireball, but they are... You can do them more easily, and I think they recover a bit faster. Um... But you mostly see them as like cancels and stuff, and I just I feel like they're not especially rewarding. They are safe though; it's kind of cool. Plus points for being safe, and you do get three of them. But I think they're just not they're not game deciding. I'm gonna put it into C. Could be B. Could be B. Um, Falk VT2. She gets two new specials that she can cancel into from her other specials. Uh, she also gets a buff to VS1. Ironically, no buff to VS2. So like I don't know. Um, the combos she gets are are really strong if you can actually get hits. You can do, like, you know, you can do combos into VS1 and then um, special moves and then trigger attacks. And when you're doing the whole sequence with that, especially in the corner, uh, she can get, like, a, a really long sequence. She can get, like, 400 damage with no meter spent. Um, that's good. I don't really think, like, the, the neutral use is really limited on it. It's basically just the overhead. And the overhead is kind of good, but it's, it's reactable. It gives her, like, a free approach sometimes. But comboing into it is, is a bit specific. It's not super common. Uh, and then the activation is is good and bad. It's bad overall, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, the activation has a hitbox, but it's like massively punishable on block. And there's no way to not 
do the attack, the VT2 activation attack. But if it hits, you can combo to super, which is kind of novel. Um, but you've got to confirm it. You've got to confirm it from like pokes. You can do low strong towards fierce. You can confirm it for from your various combos. You can just cancel into it from like an uppercut or um, I think the uh, multi kick special, whatever you call that, kick kick special. Um, you can go into it from basically all our routes, but you can't just go into it raw. Whereas VT1, you can just kind of yellow activate. So she also doesn't have some activate on block stuff. So you don't get the Roman cancel component. Yeah, catapult. There you go. Is it catapult with a K though? Or am I making that up? Uh, the install being unsafe kind of sucks. And I don't think it's amazing in neutral besides that. But it does offer some really strong combos, which is kind of cool. I'm going to put it in C. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think C is that bad. Really, this could be like B and B minus. It shouldn't be B and C. There you go. Um, what else? Oh, the overhead jumps cancels are... I mean, they could even potentially be interrupted, which I think hurts it a little bit, too. Uh, Falk VT1. I see Falk players pick this sometimes. I'm not a believer. Um, it might be better than I think. I think that... Uh, okay, so VS1 becomes a real fireball, and then Fong poisons you just by being near you. And that's hard to quantify. That's actually pretty good, because you do get a lot of free damage from that. And then um, he doesn't need to charge to do his special moves. Um, eh, not needing a charge is usually not a big deal because most of Fong's combos build inherent charge. So the only combo I can think of right off the top of my head where you don't, where not being able to charge it. Like if you get like a, a cross through with his DP plus punch move or whatever, DP plus kick, how do you do that thing? Um, if you get a cross through with that and then get jab into stand forward, that combos, but you have no charge, for example. So if you're in BT1, you can get like a, a Sotoja cancel if you want. Um, so that, that's nice, you know, but that's most, if you do in like Stammer House or something like that, or, you know, you usually just have cancel time, so, or I mean charge time. Um, jab, jab, uh, fierce, whatever. Uh, uh, the VS1 becoming a real fireball, I think is a little bit of a meme. Um, the hitbox on it is pretty good, and I think you get combos out of it from close range cancels if you want to do that. Um, oh, it's crooky. I think that's okay. Um, but it interacting with other fireballs is kind of <laughs> a downside too. Um, you can do YOLO cancels while being able to move. I didn't think about that. You can just do like walk in low strong and still so dojo cancel with the with the instant canceling. That's nice. That's actually nice. You're right. Slay man. Slay man right. Oh, and I think down towards fierce cancels, right? And that's normally a really hard cancel to do into Sotoja, but with VT1 it's easy. Um, I'm going to put it to B-, minus, but really... Eh, it's Yeah, it is a two-bar trigger. Um, and poisoning the opponent is kind of nice. It could be, it could be okay. Um, yeah, it's fine there. VT2, uh, it's better than, I think it's better than VT1. You get, um, all, I, I, not even all the specials. The Rio Benda becomes better. It becomes safe and it launches, and I think it lasts longer. And the hitbox is bigger. And then the Nishi Qs, the upward fireballs, they have bigger hitboxes and they're easier to juggle from. And then you have extra hits done on stuff. Uh, and the extra hits done on the Nishi Q, for example, so you can like do the dash canceling and pick up a combo more easily. So that's that's really nice. Oh yeah, and the Nishi Qs explode when they hit the ground, so much bigger hitboxes. They're bigger hitboxes while they're traveling, and then even bigger when they land. So basically, his his neutral gets better with all his, his special moves. Uh, and then you also get his combos change quite a lot. Because you can do stuff like, um, instead of going into Sotoja, you can do mine stuff. You can do like uh, Stand Run Out Slow Strong Mine or Stand Forward Mine. And then you can do a Nishi Q into Sotoja or just a raw Sotoja. Stuff like that. Um, his damage is really low in general. Fong is like, it relies on the poison to make up the difference. And his damage being really low kind of goes to average with VT2. It's, it's decent. It's not horrible, but I think it's like... The the buff of VT2 is that it does power up his combos, but um, he still uh, he's still not that strong even with it. You should jump over it. Still have time to block. Fong cancels into dash. He still gets what he wanted. I think it makes his uh, Nishiku dash stuff a lot better, doesn't it? In general. 
I'm gonna put it. I put it into. I put it into C before B minus, and really I would put it to B minus if B minus was a real tier, which it now is because I made it one. Um, I think it's better than VT one. It might be in B. I'm gonna put it into B. I'm just gonna chuck it into B, and all will be well. GVT one. Um, probably once S. Hard to say. It might have always. Mm, it might have always been. Might have always been A. I think it's still A. Uh, he gets specials into specials, and then he also gets basically full presidentiality all the time. Uh, and I think there's something else. Oh yeah, you get the the fireball version of the V skill one. Mm, and I think there might be a change to B VS two as well, but I don't remember what. Maybe it's shorter, or he gets the armor sooner or something. I don't know. Um, the momentum is still really good. You can still get, like, you know, just YOLO dash punches into V skills without needing to think. Um, what else? It still lasts a decently long time. It's variable based on which version of G you are when you activate, but even with level 1 G, it's, it's a decent amount of time. It's like one less special move cancel than it used to be. But if you're level 3G, it's still good. It's like as good as it was. Um, you got very good activation routes into it. And then you've got really good neutral and just a constant control with just the air. And, like being able to just randomly dash punch and then combo out of it is really nice. Um, I don't think it was nerfed out of A tier unless it was at some point. No, yes, Bab, you can still do it. Um, unless it was never A tier and it was S tier, in which case I think it got nerfed A tier. But I think it's A tier. We'll put it in A. Um, yeah, BS1 cancels got more expensive, too. I forgot about that. VT2? I put it into C, but I regret that. I think it's probably B. Um, you get the armor command grab and you get the explosion cancels. I think the armor command grab is, is better than not having it. I think the explosions are pretty good. I think the explosions are really good. Um, the command grab, it's slow, and G already has a command grab, but the command grab has armor. And so it's actually pretty interesting as a reversal option to exploit the armor. So you could like use it to punish a be reversal or something like that. Um, that's pretty cool. It's quite novel. Um, but, you know, with any command grab trigger, you take your life in your hands to do the command grab. And, you know, people are already, people are already potentially jumping out of G stuff. Um, but the explosion, you can combo it from like any cancel. And that includes like you know, cancel special moves, and then also, like, just, like, low forward or stuff like that, just pokes. So that's kind of nice. And it is it is quite strong. Uh, situationally, you can combo it to Super 2, but most of the hits, you'll just get the explosion, and then that'll be that. But the knockdown's quite good, too. Very, throws you very far away, and she gets okay. And the the power is quite good. The power on the explosion is actually very high. Uh, but combine that with the fact that you can just squeeze it into any combo, um, that's pretty good. And it does have some neutral use. Um, and it is cheaper. There you go. It is cheaper. Minus five spin kick at the BT2 to frame trap people. S tier on CFN. Slave man said it, so it's it's good. I've actually seen that, and it's it's quite a meme. Let's put it in B. Probably B. Could be A, if you're a true believer. I didn't really think that Zangief was S. I put it into S. I was like, this is either S or A. And then... Uh, I put it into S because I thought it would generate more content. And I thought people would pick a fight with that. I thought they'd be like, oh, yeah, like, what the fuck? Where did you put an S? But actually, like, a few, no, almost no one complained about that, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, the reason I think it's quite good, let's see. So Zangief vacuums the opponent in with a spinning lariat. And if you hold the buttons, it hits. And if you hold it for a really long time, it gives you a launch. Uh, and that's only even possible if you have quite a lot of trigger time left. You've got to have, like, over two-thirds of the bar left to even do the launch. So, you know, if you use it and it doesn't pan out, or if you use it as a media to pull opponents in, you can lose the ability to combo out of it. Um, except by super. So Zangief pulls the opponent in. Uh, the activation, and also all subsequent uses, are extremely good versus fireballs, which is normally something Zangief kind of has to dance around. Um, yeah, and then you can do it meaty, and then pull the opponent in, and then get like a... Even on scenarios where he wouldn't normally get Oki, he gets Oki, which is kind of cool, because the vacuum pulls the corpse. Um, that's super good. And then the thing that really makes it good, I think, is the, you can just do it from any normal. 
you can just do once you're activated, you can literally just combo like a crouch jab into like massive damage. Which was better when he had comboable crouch jabs, but it's still good to this day. Because, you know, Zangief's crouch jab is pretty good for counter poking stuff. It's very scary to push a button when Zangief's in front of you and he's just walking towards you and you want to poke him, but then you get counter hit by crouch jab that would have whiffed and then you eat a full VT1. That's pretty scary. That being said, he has to already be in trigger to do that. And activating with Geef is not so easy. It depends. Depends. Um, if he just activates Rot, pulls in, but then it's unsafe. So he has to activate and then use a little bit of the trigger on block, which is, you know, a bit iffy. But even then, that can lead to a full combo, which is kind of cool. And then you can combo from Lariat, I guess, if you're so inclined. Or rather, activate it from Lariat. It does combo from Lariat, but I wouldn't call it super good. Um, but it's really good for punishing fireballs, which are weakness. It gives you insane conversions from any poke. It's not just jab, but it does work from jab. You can do it from, like, I don't know, staying strong or something, or staying fierce, if you're so inclined. Um, it's very scary. It makes geefs, like, pokes very scary. Um, and then it really helps him against a lot of characters he's otherwise kind of weak to. So I was, like, on the fence of putting it between S and A. I put it in A. I mean, I put it in S just for generating content. That was my sincere opinion. But it might be S. I don't know. Crouch jab times 2, tap VT into super. Yes, but no, because you can't do crouch jab times 2 anymore. You can do low short, low jab, and then tap VT into super. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, the VT pull combos to super, even if you don't do any hits, which is kind of cool. But it's not amazing. It's more like a way to still keep the trigger useful if you don't have whatever. Yeah, Geef's only like confirms now or like stand jab, stand short, or low short, low jab. <laughs> Times were hard on him. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in S and we'll use that to keep generating content. But if there was an A minus, I mean if there was an S minus, I'd put it in S minus. We'll call it an A plus trigger. Um what else? That's it. Uh, I don't think it's... Well... <laughs> Zangief, I think I think Zangief VT2 is one of the most fun triggers in the game. I don't truly think it's bad. I think it's okay. Uh, it does an ass ton of damage. He gets like 300 damage, 330 or something like that from a successful SPD. Uh, and then it's gone. So one and done. Um, and he can link out of it, which is not... You lose damage from linking out of it, but it does give you confirms into it, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's a super simple trigger. It's pretty scary. You know, it, it like, you know, <laughs> even though you know it's like not as scary as his VT1, when Geef's got VT2 active and he's walking towards you and he's and you're in throw rage, you want to hold up or you just want to V shift or you want to do something. You do not want to eat that. That is a lot of damage. You just like melt. It's like eating a super, except it's just a trigger. Um, yeah, and you can get like, you know, uh, Close, you can get crush countered, fierce, or fully charged fierce dash in SPD gives you the grab version, stuff like that. You got some pretty strong combos. Um, and even if you don't want to take the risk of a raw SPD, it does work for the air one as well, but um, it's uh, <laughs> I'd prefer to use the ground one. Uh, if you don't want to take the risk with a raw SPD, you do have stuff like low strong stain short SPD if you want to do that towards fierce stain short SPD. You can just confirm into it. It's not like that doesn't work. And in fact, people would be more likely not to not to block because you got the VT active. So those kinds of things are probably better. Um, and then it's not often discussed, but the activation is more useful than VT1 because VT1 forces you to do like the the spinning hits and whatever. You don't even get to do anything with it. But Zangief uh, VT2 activations are often plus as hell and he gets a mix up, which is kind of fun. Like Lariat into trigger activate on block is like, it's like plus 15 or something. It's quite a lot. Okay. Um, so, you know, you've got some you got some fun stuff to have with that. It's it's very powerful if it hits, even with like the combos into it, even from like stand short uh I mean towards fear stand short medium SPD or whatever the combo is. Um even with stuff like that, it's pretty strong. And even if you do just stuff like uh anti air lariat activation or like combo to lariat activation EX air SPD, that's pretty strong too. Um you do have the double scaling for or that because of the trigger activate. But um I I put into I put into B and I don't think anyone pointed it out. I don't remember anyone pointing it out. I think it's okay. I think if you want to pick it in certain matchups, it's, it's functional. And I'd like more Zangiefs to pick it just because it's fun. But it's 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 all or not. It's very all or nothing. It's not truly all or nothing because you get two attempts. But once that SPD hits, it's uh um your trigger ends. Uh, Gil VT1 and VT2 are pretty different, but also very similar. Um, it's kind of hard for me to talk about because I don't know his combos super well. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, for both his triggers, the main thing that he gets is that all of his matching elements inflict the status every time. So, like, you're, if you pick BT1, you get the, the fire effect on every fire special. And if you pick BT2, you get the ice effect on every ice special. Um, that's really good, because that gives you combos with an ass ton of retributions. You can just get, like, three retributions off of, like, fucking your basic B&Bs, which is really crazy. And both of those make Gil a lot better. Like, the combos will be different between the two triggers, but whether you're doing BT1 or BT2, you still have, like, a fuck ton of retributions in a single combo either way, which is really good damage, really big combo extensions, better corner carry, and then also a lot of meter build. So all that stuff is really nice. His combo routes get a lot better when the trigger's activated. In terms of neutral, they have some good stuff too, because you basically get, your fireballs get a lot bigger for that matching element, and then they inflict the status, which is nice. Um, what else? I feel like there's something something big. Uh, oh, you get the new special moves as well. They have different special moves. Uh, both of them are good in neutral. The ice one has like a big old icicle that pushes the opponent away. Comboing into it is pretty strong, and you get some kind of cool retribution stuff with it too. Um, and then the fire one is like a, a fireball that's pretty fast, it zips across the screen, hits the opponent's feet, and I think it goes through other fireballs. Kind of cool. Um, generally, I think the VT1 exclusive specials are better than the VT2 exclusive specials. And then generally, I think fire effect is more useful than ice effect. I think they're probably, I think VT1 is probably a bit better. Um,. I think they're I I put them both in B without really thinking about it, but retrospectively I think they're probably both A, just because I think Guild becomes a much better character um once Trigger's active. So I think I think it's a pretty big deal. I'm gonna put him into A. And I think they're both probably A. Um I do think VT one is probably a bit better, but it's hard to say. BT2 was probably hurt a little bit by V Shift as well, but Guild players always say that all the setups are fake, so I believe Guild players. Let me take a sip real quick. Gal BT1 probably used to be an A trigger. Um, I mean, probably used to be an S trigger. Probably still an A trigger. Uh, it's not. It's yes. It's yeah. He he still has the really long looping combos, and he has a different one with VS2, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, those are pretty good, but getting a, the opportunity to get them doesn't come every day, so it's not a huge deciding factor, but it is nice. Like when Oro gets his like, jab, low jab, stand forward, a fireball combo kind of stuff. It's like the opportunity is not always there, but when the opportunity arises, you get nice returns. Um, I'm going to put it to A. Uh, a lot of neutral use. You get the, the chargeless fireballs. You get the fireball activate, which is really good. Uh, BT2 doesn't have that. Um, you get added damage in basically any combo. You can just do like a bunch of booms. It's kind of expensive, but can be good, especially if you go for like the dash in, like Stain Fierce over Roundhouse or something like that. And you also get the powered up super, which is kind of good. Uh, I rarely see that discussed. You still get, and you get really nice damage off of EX boom and follow ups, so that's kind of good. Um, but it's really good in fireball matchups, and it's very impressive that they don't have a fireball. So it's kind of good all around. Very nice neutral use. Not super high damage, but decent. Uh, it's very easy to waste. <laughs> and if you don't waste it, it's it does last quite a while. Um, I think it's pretty good. You can use it to get a lot of screen, too. It's... Um, I, think it's I think it's probably A. Hard to say. I think it's probably A. Uh, Gal 2, I put in B. He gets improved flash kicks. And then the flash kicks also shoot fireballs. Uh, flash Kick to EX Flash Kick is a combo he gets, and it's surprisingly a pretty good combo. It's, like, very nice. You get good damage out of it, even without the EX, but the EX really pushes it over. Um, and that's not only a good combo to just confirm into from, like, Stand Strong, Low Strong stuff. But, excuse me. But it's also a good anti-air. Like, you can do anti-air Flash Kick and then EX Flash Kick, and that just doesn't ask ton of damage. You can even, like, if they, if they jump in, you can activate while they're coming in, and then anti-air them with Flash Kick, EX Flash Kick. So that shit's pretty strong, you know? That's really nice. Very high damage combo for one bar. Um, his mirrorless combos are better with it too, but the EX is really nice. And then you also have the normal, you have kick normal cancels to EX flash kick. And that's kind of cool. Um, and I think you don't need charges for your flash kicks? Or am I making that up? Um, EX flash kick might always be that fast, I don't remember. 
What else? Oh, you can use the Flashgate Fireballs in neutral, I guess. I I'm, I was never a huge believer in that, but it is possible. It is like a Fireball that also anti-airs, which is kind of novel. Um, but it can be kind of risky, too. Um, yeah, and you get the combo out of low forward, although I don't think you can raw confirm it, right? But being able to combo out of it is nice. He doesn't have like a super good low confirm besides that. Low short, you've got to do point blank. I don't think that's usually deal breaker. The cancels from the kick normals, but it's it's a very decent trigger just because the extra damage everywhere. Oh, and improving your anti airs with the flash kick and the ex flash kick, and just damage in general. Improving your anti airs indirectly improves your fireballs. So that's a really neat thing about VT two, is that if the opponent's scared of getting flash kicked, that's more booms. So it could be A. I'm gonna put it to B, but I think it's I think it's B plus. Honda. I put this into A, and people actually liked that. They were like, yeah, no, you know, I kind of like that. Um, he gets the Armored Headbutt special. Um, you got some neutral use in that it guard crushes, which is occasionally possible. And you can also use it as, like, a buffered cancel. You can do pokes into the headbutt, which is kind of cool. Um, it vastly improves his hands combos damage. Like, he can just do, like, pokes into hands or whatever, you know, like, standard stuff like stand for your heavy hands or, or low jab light hands or whatever. You can just do, like, you know, hands cancels. And um, if any hands cancel combos, you get the headbutt or the double headbutt, and you just get an ass ton of damage and a knockdown, which I think is really good. And then potentially a super cancel, which I think is really good. And then the activation routes are better than BT2 and quite good. Being able to do, like, hands into into trigger activate is really nice. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's really good. And then the super cancels are really good for meter dumping. And then the armor and guard break stuff give it a couple neutral uses. The armor in particular is kind of cool because you can do... A lot of people view reverse light hands and just hands in general. And you can react to a view reverse with uh, the headbutt and then armor their view reverse and then hit them with the headbutt, which is pretty dank. Yeah, I'll do guys for SF6. You can do that with BT2 as well. It's something that you can do with either of his triggers. It's quite useful. Um, and then it's safe on block. It's only like minus two on block, so it's not overly risky to attempt. So just trying to use it for the armor or something like that is is not as risky as you would think. Um, I think it's I think it's A. Cause you get three uses as well. It's kind of nice. And you can save them for three. Oh, and you get the combos from headbutt now too. I should have mentioned that because you can do like you know, jump roundhouse, stand forward headbutt or whatever, stand roundhouse, stand forward headbutt, and then still get one or two. Trigger uses. That's pretty... That's beefy. That shit is beefy. I think that's... I think that's an A trigger. This is points for being three bars, but they all do. Uh, Honda VT2 I put in B. I think it's worse. I don't think it's way worse. The juggles out of it are really good. They do pretty good damage. The trigger itself does really good damage. Um, and then the combos out of it are just icing on the cake. And it finds a corner, which is really nice. And you get Oki off of it, which is really nice. So overall, it's it's very rewarding to hit. The downside, I think, that makes it not so good is that if you use it in neutral, it's reactable. They won't always react. In fact, maybe they won't even usually react. But it is reactable. And if they neutral jump, you get smushed by someone neutral jumping and then coming down on you with a full combo. And apart from that... So it doesn't have that much neutral use apart from its armor. Um... So you're basically limited to landing it from hands, but landing it from hands is very possible. It's not like Honda has a really hard time using hands in neutral. He can just throw hands out, and then if anyone hits, he can go trigger two, and then, you know, get you in the corner, get a bunch of damage, get Oki. So it's very rewarding, and you get two of them, which is nice. Uh, and then you also can armor through view versus and stuff like that, especially if they try to view versus your hands. So it's it's very workable. It's not bad at all, but um, the fact that the grab is reactable hurts its neutral use a lot, I think. Ibuki BT1. Um, this probably was an S-trigger at some point, but it got hurt by V-shift, and it also got hurt by nerfs many patches ago. Um, I think I put it in B, but I think it might be A. I think Spab liked it too. Um, might be A. A. VT1 and VT2 are very similar now. The big trick is that VT2 has to be done on the same combo as your activate, so you often get extra scaling, whereas VT2... Like, you can get two VT2s... You can get two VT2s per round. You pretty much only ever get one VT1 per round. But the VT1 has two uses, and one of them won't be during the activate combo. So it's just, like, when do you want your two mix-ups, basically. Yeah, it's still three bars. Um, 
it's very easy to confirm into, and she does get two of them. The damage is quite good, and she also can use it for mix-ups. She can do like stuff like um, hide behind the bomb and do an overhead or a low or something like that. You can uh, wait for the bomb to almost explode, then do a jump over or like a jump uh, kunai kinage. Um, you've got dash through stuff where it's hard to see which side she ended up on because of the bomb explosion. Um, you can dash through right before it explodes and get them with a surprise cross-up. There's still quite a lot of stuff with that. That being said, the bomb hitting on the way in was kind of... It makes it a bit harder to um, uh, use in that way. I feel like there's no bomb timer that's exactly how much I want it to last, even though you've got like four different bomb timers. Uh, the hit is really nice, though, because it lets it, it much, it's much easier to confirm. You can just do any button into bomb, and then the bomb hits, and then you get uh, low strong towards roundhouse or something like that, or uppercut. I don't know. Um, they kind of, like, because it hits, you're forced to go into the very specific routes to come out of the hit, though, which is, they kind of streamlined it a little bit, which I, I didn't think was super cool. But overall, I think it's still very strong. You've still got a lot of mix-ups off of it, which makes it very good in neutral. And then it's decently rewarding on hit. And it's very easy to confirm. You can just do, like, you know, kunai into, into bomb throw, stuff like that. Um, overall, it's not bad. It's probably A. Being a low health character with a three-bar B trigger always hurts, but look, Akuma's right there in A as well, so, you know. Uh, BT2, I really think they're very similar to each other. I'm going to put it into A as well. I already had it in A. This one was also probably an S trigger at some point, but also hurt by B shift. Um, it gives her conversions from any poke, cancel it into trigger. She gets nice mix-ups on the return journey from the shuriken, and it's plus two again now on the shuriken throw. Um, so you get a mix-up, even disregarding the returning shuriken. And then you also get some anti-air combos with it. You can do like anti-air shuriken into double EX Rido, stuff like that. Um, the combos out of it are, are decently strong and then also lead to like mix-ups and then she does have a few specific combos that are really strong with it, but not so frequent. Not very common. But you can get two per round pretty easily. Um, a lot of the a lot of the one and done projectile triggers are pretty good. Damn, I've been talking for a while. How deep are we? We're probably like close to halfway. Jury VT1. I put it in A without really thinking about it. I was like, oh, that trigger's pretty good. And then a couple people reacted to my post about Jury. VT1 being there, and I couldn't tell if they thought it was too high or too low. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. It gives her unlimited Fuha stocks, um, and then it gives her normal, normal chains, and I think also improved dashes. Um, I think all that stuff is pretty good. She might get improved walk speed too, or am I making that up? Uh, every poke converts to good damage, so she can just do like stand medium kick. Kind of S? Okay. I was like, I, I, I kind of thought about it in S, and then I put it in A. I don't know if I believe it's S. I feel like it it doesn't improve her damage enough to be S, I feel. Um, maybe it's S. I don't know. It's hard for me. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I truly believe it's S. But you know, if Jerry players truly b believe it's S, then that's something. It's not an ordered tier list. I put it into A without thinking about it. Um, but you get pokes into good damage. You get lots of fuha uses if you want to do it like that. Although that does kind of waste a lot of trigger time. Uh, but you can just do like you know repeated light fuha. Um, you get better pressure sequences, you get better neutral with those extra Fuha stocks. It's not actually that hard to preserve, too, because you can still do her normal routes, generally speaking. Generally speaking. Um, I put it into, I put it into A, but maybe it's S. We'll call this one A+, but we'll put it into A anyway. Okay, everyone please understand. Um... I put Jury VT2 into C without thinking about it either. I just didn't think for Jury. So I was just like, eh, I remember those things. They're not very good. Well, one's good and one's not good. But, like, uh, I think I underrated Jury a bit. I usually complain when other people underrate Jury and then I underrated Jury. I think the meter drain is actually really good. Everyone acts like the meter drain sucks. Everyone treats it like it's not even a factor of the trigger. They're just like, oh, the activation. Oh, you get one plus frame or whatever. But, um... Uh... The opponent, if the opponent's comboing you, they basically don't build any meter. And if you're comboing the opponent, you, you know, prevent them from building meter too. Uh, one annoying thing about it is it only drains meter when the opponent's on the ground. But Jury does have some routes that keep the opponent on the ground longer, including from the activation, which is kind of cool. Uh, when she activates, it regrounds the opponent, and then she gets stand strong so she can do her TC. Uh, and then I think she also gets all of her stocks once, right? She just fills up all her stocks. Um, so that's kind of nice. And there are some juggles into it with the the... What's the name of that? Her flip kick. I don't remember. Her little Hazanchi looking thing. 
you've got some confirms into it from that. You've got like stay medium kick second hit confirms into it, and that's a very good button. I think it's probably B. Um, but it's not much apart from the meter drain, and then that one reground where you get your TC. That's it. It's just those two things. It gives you your reground. That's plus on block, or um, leads to your TC on hit, or it or I it does that, and then it also drains the opponent's meter. This is this is about it. It's a very simple trigger, but it's it's okay. It's decent. I think a few people thought it was better than C, and you know maybe it's better than C. It could be C. Could be B minus. Um, Kage, I think I put this one as B, but I was kind of thinking maybe it could be A, and then someone else said it should be A, and now I kind of think it should be A. Maybe A, maybe A, maybe B. Uh, Kage gets both of his V skills improved, and then he gets a teleport. Uh, the VS1 goes a lot farther, uh, and then the, the range is insane if you fully charge it, and then it's safe on block. Um... The full charge one goes like full screen and it crumples on hit, so you get huge damage if you can find a way to get it. But even in just combos with like your your fireball into VS1, it's pretty strong. And then you get a lot of corner carry, which is nice. Uh, the re thing that really makes it nice is the VS2, I think, because the VS2 cancels into it are, are really strong and easy to land. And then Kage gets the combo out of them, so he gets like insane corner carry. Uh, he gets OTGs, he gets some air cancels. Uh, he can use the jump in neutral to try and like jump over a potent buttons or jump over throws, stuff like that. The, the demon is good, but that's the other trigger. Uh, the teleport's okay. I think most of the utility comes from the VS2 uses, but the teleport's not bad either. There's some situations where the movement's useful. There's some situations where the uh, you can use it in combos, so it's kind of cool. Uh, only two uses of BT1 kind of hurts, but it's a two-bar trigger, so I can't complain that much. I'm going to put it into A. I had it B before, but I think it might be A. Um, VT2, you get Misogi, you get Raging Demon. Kage's Raging Demon is, in my opinion, fucking nuts. It's insanely good. The damage is good. It works like a true 720. He's got great resets into it. And it also punishes everything in the game that's minus two. Uh, and he can also just combo into it. So you don't even have to use it like a, a command grab. You can just do, like, stomp into into Demon if you want. And that's strong. Uh, the downside is that costs your full super and your trigger. So that kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. He gets better activations in BT2. You can do it off of, like, fireballs and stomps and stuff. So that's a big plus, because then you get, like, down fierce into um, heavy stomp. That's really nice. That's actually a really big plus over over BT1, is that you get better activation routes. Uh, Misogi's really good, too. Um, you can basically put it wherever the fuck you want. It just combos from everything. Um, oh, yeah. Stomp gets more plus. And, yeah, the heavy fireball gets better, too. Yeah, I didn't mention that. I didn't mention that. I, I should have mentioned that when I was just describing the trigger. Uh, both of those are really useful. Um, what else? What was I going to say? Oh, the Misogi combos from everything. So you can do, like, stand medium kick Misogi or, like, you know, uppercut Misogi, stuff like that. And then it's got minimum scaling, so even if you've got a pretty long combo, Misogi combos are always strong. Uh, and then you can also use it to punish fireballs or, you know, do some kind of surprise factor stuff. So it's it's very, it's also pretty damaging. It's, like, pretty strong. It's not bad to end a combo with it, even if it's, a like, a pretty long combo because of the minimum scaling and just the high damage. And then, yeah, Oki from every, any, anything. That's a big deal. He gets, like, true Oki alphabet. You can even do, like, meaty overhead stuff, for example, and get your plus three overhead. Uh, I put it in B. It could be A. It could be B. Yeah, you can do the juggle sweeper and then the light tatsu and then the uppercut and then the misogi, and it's pretty strong. Could be could be B, could be A. This is an a, a, B plus, maybe A minus. Okay. Somewhere in there. If someone thinks it's A, it probably is A. I don't know. Another big sip. Um, Kareen VT1. I already didn't think it was super amazing, just because it's kind of gimmicky. Like, it's got... If you just try if you just try to focus on blocking it, it's not too hard to block. There's, like, a Resenha follow-up. You can stand block. Uh, there's a... Like, a jump grab follow-up that you've got to crouch. There's, like, a but is visually distinct from the other one. There's like a slide follow up, you gotta block low. There's a shimmy where she steps away from you. Um, a very good response to like everything is just reversal crouch jab after blocking the initial one. Because if she does no follow up, I think it's a punish. And then uh, no matter what follow up she does, the, the, the neutral punch follow up beats it. But that's very risky for Kareen to do because she has to do it predicting your reversal jab and it's very unsafe on block. And then the slide also beats a reversal jab, but is very unsafe on block. So instant like reversal block, 
I mean, a reversal crutch jab after blocking puts Karine into a really awful situation where she's either got to commit to something very unsafe or she gets punished. So, um, BT1 kind of can be shut down by just, like, either reacting to what she does or um, crutch jabbing her. And not only that, but um, uh, it got hurt by v a little bit, too. So, almost always, people do, like, just the shimmy. Which is probably the best way to use it, just like the wreck into the shimmy. And that keeps Kareen safe, but it takes a ton of her trigger time. The combos into it are not super amazing either. If you do like a instant tenko, and then you do like the, the juggle into uh, wreck into slide, it's kind of good. It's not great. It's better than not having trigger active. Um, but it's not it's not amazing. I put it in C, and I think it's, it's probably C. Probably C trigger. Not super great. Um... What else? I think there might be something I forgot about it. I just don't think it. There's a lot of there's a lot of re reset options, but they're all kind of gimmicky, and then uh, it doesn't improve her combos that much. Korean VT2 is maybe my pick for the worst trigger in the game. I'll put it in D. Um, it gives Korean parries, and she can combo out of the parries into juggles. And the juggles are decently strong. In its defense, the juggles are decently strong. Uh, parries are, like, not the option you want in SF5. And just most fighting games in general. And it's on a character who has an invincible reversal. And also has low health and hates committing to stuff. Um, the combos are kind of jank. Uh, on the surface, they're really good, but they're kind of, like, annoying to do. Like, it doesn't really throw the opponent at the perfect height where you could just do an instantly timed special move and get the juggle properly. You've got to kind of wait a little bit. And the timing will be different based on whether she parries a high, lo uh, low or a high, which is kind of annoying. Um, the really big gimmick with this trigger is she can cancel most of her special moves into it. And it's actually really interesting. Um, a lot of her special moves just have a hard counter. Um, so, like, for example, a Resenha on block. If you low jab or something after blocking Resenha, it punishes no follow-up, it interrupts the slide follow-up, and it dodges the up plus cake follow up, allowing you to get a punish. So, like, reversal low jab just kills Resenha as a special move on block. So, you know, most green players who are decent don't use Resenha on block. Um, but if you do Resenha on block and cancel into the parry, it'll parry a reversal jab. And she's got that with, like, Mujin Kyaku as well. Like, you would do, like, a reversal normal on the, uh, the overhead follow up with the medium one, but the parry will parry that. Stuff like that. She, it, like, it, it, it challenges the counters to her specials. Um, and no one uses those specials on block, generally speaking, above a certain skill level. And you can also do it after, like, a Rochi. You can also do it after Tenko stuff. Uh, you can catch people trying to punish her unsafe stuff, which is interesting. Um, but each of those parries to attempt, like, is potentially crush counterable if they don't commit. And also, they could just go for reversal throw. Um... It's overly risky on a character with low HP, I think. And, like, especially a character who already has an invincible reversal. I think Kareen is a character about being very stable and neutral-oriented. And this was a cool attempt to save her special moves, but I think that Kareen is better played as, like, a walking medium punch. I don't think she should be using those special moves, even with the way to mix them up to make them safe. Just don't even play with it. I think you'd rather just... Use V shift <laughs> or V reverse or VT one. Ken BT one, I put it in B. Some people were like, eh, it might be A. Uh, I might have underrated it. It might be A. Uh, all of Ken specials improve. The fireball has less recovery. It knocks down the DPS recover faster, which gives you some new combos. Uh, you get cancels to V skill from fireball and EX fireball, which is actually pretty good, but also costs a ton of trigger time. Um, fireball recovery is not, not super significant. The fireball knockdown is pretty good. Uh, the fireball, the V skill stuff is situationally really good, especially after EX fireball. Uh, it's pretty good in combos and in pressure, situationally, but it is expensive. The improved DPs add a lot of damage. Oh, he gets improved Tatsus as well. The Tatsus do more damage. Uh, the improved DPs add a lot of damage and give him some new combos. Um, the improved Tatsus are are pretty nice, and he gets a better EXR Tatsu. It's all it's all good buffs, but nothing about it I think is super crazy. I probably could have put it in A. Oh yeah, the safe heavy Tatsu, this minus two. 
That's uh, that's a nice little meme. You can hit it coming in, <laughs> but it is it is, and it's not even it's you know it's just safe. It's not even it's not even plus or anything. It's like still minus two, but it's not minus four. Um, it's probably B plus. It might be A minus. It's somewhere between. Somewhere between. Could be could be A. Okay. Could be A. I don't know. Shinryuken, I also put this one in B. This one I think probably is A. I don't know. I think I underrated both of Ken's. Uh it's often a combo tool. It's very unsafe on block. So you can't just, you know, it's that hurts its neutral use a lot. Um you can confirm it from any special move, so including anti air DP, uh including his two V skills. Um any cancel into a fireball can be confirmed into VT2. Um, that's all very nice, I think. So, you know, just random fireball cancels become very deadly. Um, and it punishes opponents' fireballs really well. And it can also be used as a whiff punish pretty well with the just big hitbox when you activate. Uh, and both of those are really nice. And for a two-bar trigger, the damage is actually pretty good, too. You get very decent returns. Whoa! Hello. Tell us about Monat. Um, but it's a pretty cheap trigger. You get multiple uses, good returns on hit. Um, I think probably whether it's S, I mean not S, whether it's A or B is probably matchup dependent. Probably depends on what character you play, how good you think they are. Colleen, VT1, this might be B. I put it into C. I'm not a believer. Call it B-. minus. Um, GHC opponent with a series of ice pillars. You get two uses out of it. It's safe. Pushes the opponent quite far away, which is pretty good for uh, Colleen, who doesn't mind playing kind of a, a neutral game. Um, it's a bit hard to combo into because you can't combo it from specials, but you do have like EX Parabellum into it. Um, and you can combo like low forward activate or stuff like that. Uh, it's it's quick on a block. It's not that rewarding on hit. You wish it was better on hit. Uh, you get a super juggle or like a VS1 juggle and maybe an overhead juggle? I don't remember. Uh, after you put it up, you can skate on the skate on the, the path you made uh, like her VT2 but you're you got to do it right away you got to commit immediately so you basically get like a VT2 thing but VT2 can do it whenever whereas like Colleen can only do it after her two trigger uses oh EX Vanity Step I forgot about that you think it could be B I don't think it's bad I probably shouldn't have put it so low I think it's underwhelming but I don't think it's bad I think Colleen could maybe pick it in certain matchups and get paid off for it. It could be B. I'm not real I'm not I'm not very dedicated to C for that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get the slide basically only if you if you commit immediately. There's no R on here. We don't have the season five characters, I'm just gonna be doing them aloud. I can't place them on the thing. Everyone's wondering about Aura. I'll just tell you right now, Aura V T two is the best trigger in the game. There, you heard it from me. I said it. Now you don't have to stick around. You can just leave. Um I'll put it in B. I'll put it in B. I'll put it in B. I think VT2 is A. I think at some point it might have been S. Uh, she gets extra range on punch normals, which is super good for her neutral. Um, she can just throw out fucking stain fierce whenever the fuck she feels like it. They nerfed it, but it's still. Or VT1 I don't think is the worst in the game. I think it's probably, probably down here somewhere. We'll talk about it. Don't worry. Um... She gets bigger hail, uh, which is pretty good. Makes it harder to jump over. Makes it more annoying to do the EX1. Um, her dash turns into the skate if you hold it, so you don't have to do it, but you can. And you get a bunch of new pressure options from that and also new combos from that. And you can also do that after um, medium medium vanity step. So she gets a lot of mileage out of that. That's actually really good. And then she's got a trigger attack, the, the, uh, trigger attack that zips in, and you cut some combos into that, and you can do two of them in a row, and it freezes the opponent. It's kind of good. Uh, the hail stuff is good. The sliding stuff is really good. The improved punches are really good. Um, I think that once she's activated, she's got some of the best normals in the game with those punches. I don't know. I think it's a pretty good trigger. Um, all right, Laura. Uh, Laura VT1. All of her specials get extra damage. The thunderclaps charge faster. Um, the EX Thunderclap always combos to Heavy Elbow, and that's a big deal because Heavy Elbow is optimal for both damage and knockdown. Um, you get a lot of little buffs. You get a lot of weird stuff. You get, like, Light Elbow Super. You get VS1 Overhead into combos. Um, 
Thunderclap to V-Skill Dash is super good. Thunderclap to V-Skill Overhead is super good. Both of those use a lot of trigger time. The trigger actually lasts a really long time if you don't do that. But that's really good on, on block or hit, so it's worth using anyway. Um, she gets crazy momentum because all of her combos lead to, you know, good knockdowns and stuff. I think that I think that Laura with VT one up is the premier offensive mix up character in the whole game. And she can just win on the spot if she gets a few hits in a row. It just becomes Laura's turn for forever. And it lasts ages. I think the people always say with um Idom that like, you know, the the round starts once the trigger activates or whatever. I think that's really how it is. Um, I'm going to put it in tests. I put it in tests for my initial list, and people actually didn't contest it. They were like, you know, I, I kind of like this. So I was like one guy who thought it was weird, and then someone else was like, no, I, I agree with that. Um, BT2 is going into D. <laughs> it's not very good. Uh, she gets a spot dodge, and she gets a command grab you can combo out of. The command grab has pretty good damage, because it combos into towards fierce. Well, the damage is low, but you get towards fierce. Um, but it's only a single use, which is kind of lame. And then uh, it's kind of risky to do a neutral because it's a command grab. Uh, the spot dodge is really novel. There's nothing else like it in the game. It's invincible, and then she can cancel it to a normal at any time, which is pretty pretty interesting. Uh, it's okay for fireballs, but it's not like it like punishes fireballs. It just avoids them. Uh, for the normal cancel, I thought that someone would show me something that would kind of convince me that it was good, but I haven't seen anything. So I don't know. <laughs> I haven't, I'm not a believer yet. I haven't seen anything to make it good. But no one picks it, so it's hard to say. Alright, Rockwell, yeah, tell me your secrets. You play Laura. Um what do you think? You think you think B? You think A? S? Okay, you know, you know it, I'm glad to have you here. Tell me. B I gotta hear this. I thought you were gonna say C. Pause the whole thing. You're getting the platform. You can shill. Here's your chance to shill. I'm I'm not even I'm not even trying to shoot you down. I want to hear it. I'm ready. This guy could know what he's talking about. It's very possible. It's even likely. Let's you play more defensive. That's really interesting cuz Laura I would not normally call a defensive character, but she does have good normals and she can neutral with those normals. I've never thought about playing Laura in a defensive way. Use your V-System and still get a trigger off. Okay, you know, it does do that. Two-bar trigger. So far, nothing you said is wrong. Everything checks out. This is interesting. But tell me about the spot dodge. Tell me about the grab. The grab is nice. You do get the towards fears. That's really rewarding mid-screen and even more rewarding in the corner. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll come back to you. We'll put it in B- minus and come back to you. <laughs> if another character had this trigger, would they want it? Uh, maybe. Oh, the dodge to like dodge like V versus and stuff, or like Mika drop kick. You're gonna drop uh, dodge a drop kick. You're gonna dodge uh Kami's Kami's dive kick, spot dodge it, then grab her. You know that would work. That would actually work. You're bringing up stuff that works. Well, I'm bringing it up, but you brought it up. There's nothing about that that wouldn't work. In certain matchups, I can see that being okay. V shift break too. Didn't think about that. V wrestle for sure. Very interesting. You wouldn't even have to do the grab. You could just spot dodge and then like towards fierce or something. I bet. <laughs> I'm a big believer in Laura VS too. But I've never seen anyone defend Laura VT2. I think Laura VST was really cool. Laura VT2, I kind of think is memes, but I'm I'm kind of I'm coming around. I'm thinking about it. Thinking about it. It's novel. It's an interesting thought. We'll put it. We'll leave it in B minus, and we'll we'll make a C tier just for Laura. All right, Lucia. Uh, all of Lucia's specials get like their EX properties, basically. Uh, you get extra damage on like everything. Um, you get the two-hit fireballs. You get combos into combos. You can do like spin kick into the spin kick becomes safe, doesn't it? I think that's actually a pretty big deal. 
You get like the minus two spin kick, the quarter circle back kick, and then it also like uh, throw crushes. It's kind of cool, interesting, novel. Um, I think that's pretty good. And then the extra hits on the fireballs is pretty good for neutral. I think that both of those are pretty nice. And then you get the meterless invincible anti airs. Let's not forget about that. You get the meter. Well, they're already invincible anti airs. You get the meterless invincible frame one reversal. I should say. Very few characters have that. That's kind of cool. You don't have to spend a bar to do an invincible reversal. Works frame one. Um, all of her combos like kind of combo into each other if you want to just burn them all in a go. So I think that's quite good. Yeah, her V skills get well. Yeah. Um, it's both. I think. What else? Oh, you can you can. I was gonna say meter dump, but really it's more like trigger dump, where you're doing all of your trigger attacks in a row, and um, you can kind of you can do like burn kick into into fireball into fireball juggle into run V skill stuff like that or run uppercut. Um, you can get quite a lot of damage from stuff like that, but you do use a lot of trigger uses. But it's meterless, you know. I think that's kind of good. And then the activations are a little bit better from it. Memory serves. Um, I put it into A. A lot of people didn't like that. <laughs> One of the two biggest things people complained about along with um, VT one was my placement of Laura VT2 was really low. I don't even think it was that low. I think I put it in B, and I put her VT1 in A. And I think I overrated the VT1, and I think I underrated the VT2. I think they're both about equally viable, and I put them in different tiers. I think a lot of Lucia's these days pick VT2. I think it's the more common trigger. So it must be better if it's the more popular one. I'm going to put them both in A. I think there's going to be more A's ever since ever since the Twitter. Ugh, they're both okay. I don't know if I, I I don't know if I'm truly a believer. No one like made a convincing argument. No one tried to argue Lucia VT1 a VT2 was good. I think it's fine. Um Lucia VT2, she swings a baton and you can combo into it and then you can combo out of it. It doesn't combo in like launches and stuff, but it combos in most of her combos because it combos from anywhere. You can land VS1 and you can land VS1 off pretty much everything. Um, the damage is pretty good. It's not like super crazy, but it's quite high. You can do like stuff like, you know, uh, combos into VS1, into into the baton swing, and then into burn kick, and then into uppercut. Um, yeah, it makes, it makes all your specials safe, which is kind of nice. Or like normals, you can do like sweep into activate. Yeah, all specials a bit strong because it's like running V skill. There's something else as well. Oh yeah, the corner carry is quite high. The corner carry on both is really good for VT1 and VT2. You get a lot of corner carry for Lucia. Um, it's mostly just safety on block and then kind of pretty strong combos on hit. Whoa, Mpreg fan 42. Not only a fan of Mpreg, but also a fan of Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> I feel like I can picture the whole person from just the username. Good catch. That is a funny username. I, there's probably a decent crossover of people who like Mpreg and people who like Hitchhiker's Guide. I feel like there's got to be a decent crossover. Um, Minot VT1. Right? I guess we can move on to Minot. Um, ah, I kind of want both... Of, I might... I might truly believe that both of Lucia's are B. We need an A minus. I really should have made an A minus. I mean, I could just make one. How do you do that? Add a row below. I'll just move it up. We'll call it. Wait. Wow. Where'd it go? Um. Oh, let's make it blue. That's kind of like a purple. Dark blue. Um, yeah, here we go. There, we did it. A minus. All right, what were some other ones that were A minus? I think we had a few. <laughs> we need a new tier. Um, you know, this might be A minus. This might be A minus. Whoa, 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 whoa. It might be A minus. What are some other ones? Kage? Where's Kage? Oh, I, like, hmm. Where the fuck is Kage? I lost him. There he is. Which one did I think was... Two? Yeah, I think two. Um, yeah. Uh, Minot VT1. Where were we? 
I think there's a few others that could go in here, but we'll just leave it. Um, Minot VT1? <laughs> no, they're not ordered within the tiers. Um, Minot VT1 is a very real candidate for the game's best trigger. It's like that or Tengu Stone, I think. It was up to me. I think Tengu Stone might be a bit better, but Minot's VT1 is really crazy good too. Um, she gets a bunch of orbs, and then she can release them with button presses or button releases. Uh, it kind of breaks the rules of the game. You can attack without committing, basically. She can release the orbs while blocking, or attacking throws, or whatever. You can even, like, do, like, super, and then release orbs while recovering from the super. So it makes anything safe, and it also... You can just do stuff. You can just, like, throw out an orb to, to attack, and then react to the successful hit without actually committing anything at all. Um... And then, you know, once you see the orbs hit, you can combo out of them. And then, depending on the situation where the orbs hit, you can potentially get a very big combo if you get something like button into orb toss, the proper orb toss, your special move, and then, like, another orb uh, trigger attack, and then dash in, and then, you know, from there. Uh, all these things just lead to, like, a massive combo that every Monot player better memorize. Um, you can also do the orb releases during a jump or a slide to kind of... It makes her safer, it makes it so you can combo out of the slide... Uh, a few other things like that. Uh, any successful hit gets the massive combo. She can get like 40% from like just repeated orb toss. Um, orb return, orb toss, uh, trigger orb, repeat kind of series. Uh, and then that into potentially super if you want. Um, and it also gives her really insane resets. You don't have to do the full sequence. You don't have to spend every single orb in a single combo. You can just like suddenly throw the opponent or suddenly shimmy the opponent. It's, yeah, you can really do anything with it. It's so good. Just as, like, uh, four hitboxes you can just use whenever you want. And then the two high ones you can situationally kind of use, but they're not as good. We'll chuck it into S. It's good. Good trigger. Uh, VT2, I've always been a believer. I think it's quite good. Um, it's very easy to use. It's, like, comical how easy it is compared to how hard VS or VT1 is. Um, she gets six different orbs that she can release as three different special moves. So, like, the light one just does a bunch of damage with massive fucking hit stun, so she can dash in and get a combo. Um, I think the medium one goes upward, and the heavy one comes down in two layers, and both of those are decent for for her neutral stuff. You get some setups with the heavy one, you get anti with the medium one, and some combos into both of them. Um, the light one, I think, is re really shines, though, because you can combo up from her orb toss, so you can do, like, stuff like medium orb toss into light uh, trigger attack, trigger special, and then get a dash in and a combo from there. And that just does a fuck ton of damage. She can get, like, really alarming, uh, uh, just, like, she can, she can get, like, a, a, a jumping combo that's just, like, f 500 damage, no problem. Stuff like that. Okay, that would be with super. Um, but even without super, she does, like, you know, 350 plus. It's quite strong. And it combos from any place where you can get the orb toss. It's quite, quite nice. Um, it's very, and you get two uses of it. I think it's probably, it's probably A. I think it's okay. It's really easy to use. If you want to pick Monop, but you don't want to learn a hard combo, you can just pick that, and it's, she's still okay. Mika, both of her triggers are really similar, but also a bit different. Uh, for both of them, she just summons Nadeshko, and she gets a screen freeze, then Nadeshko comes in, and has a push box and stuff, and then she does something, and then Mika can potentially combo out of it. Um, BT1 is cheaper. It's two bars, and BT2 gets two uses. And the attack from VT2 is arguably more useful, although they kind of do different things. Um, I put them both in B. I... Mm, Fudo made them look really good. <laughs> they might be A, but it feels like one and done for both of them, even though VT2 is kind of two and done. Like, they make a lot of stuff safe. They let her push a mix-up when she wouldn't normally be able to, and Mika's up-close mix-up is probably the best in the game until you consider triggers. Um, she gets a lot of tricky resets with them. You can get, like, some really ambiguous, like, neutral jump cross-up stuff or, like, you know, s surprise side swap. I think they're both very decent for neutral. And VT1 is very easy to use twice per round, so that's nice. Um, the damage from either one isn't usually super good, but there are some situations where they can be kind of strong. Like, if you get, like, button into activate into... EX, Mika, swing, thing, shooting Peach, and then you get the delayed Farwall, Nadeshko drop kick, 
into a juggle. Like, that actually hurts quite a lot. But usually the combos aren't super strong. They hurt by V-Shift. I didn't really think about that. But I guess they, they were both hurt by V-Shift. The mix-ups are super good, and there's a lot of them. So if you just lab them, you can you can find some weird shit. I'll put them into A minus. I usually like triggers like this. I made A minus. I'll use A minus. Um. Oh, we're getting through it slowly. Nash VT one. Uh, probably used to be an A trigger. Probably never S. But nerfs and power creep hurt it. Um, it's really over in an instant. Is my big problem with it. Like you just use it and then it's gone <laughs> and it doesn't have a hitbox or anything it just it allows him to combo certain things he wouldn't normally be able to combo he still has the season one scaling on it which is kind of cool it only adds one tick of scaling instead of two uh but the combos with it aren't super strong it is a good fireball response it also escapes the corner really well and you could potentially use it to get jumping punishes on a lot of stuff including fireballs um it's mostly for neutral use it does have some combo use you can cancel into sonic boom and then cancel into the the jumping version, and then get a side swap and a, a pretty powerful... You get a jumping combo. It's not bad. Um, but it's mostly for the movement and picking up certain punishes and escaping corners. I think it's a bit one-dimensional. That's what really hurts it for me. Um, I put it into C before. I probably would put it to B- minus if B- minus was a tier. And B- minus is a tier. It is pretty fast, yeah. So I'll put it to B-, minus, but it could be B. Could be B. Um... Let's see here. Nash BT2. I'm a bit of a believer. Um, he gets a command dash. It has follow-ups. There's a ground pump follow-up. It's kind of slow, but it's an overhead and does good damage. And I think it's plus on block. You get some nice combos on hit. Um, it's good as a combo route from the kick follow-up, but apart from that, it's really hard to combo into. Um, a minus. Ooh, you think? I, I said I was a believer. I didn't think I was that much of a believer. I think A minus believer. I was a B believer. Um, the kick follow-up is really good. You can easily combo it from Sonic Booms. You can combo it from, like, Sonic Psych 2, I think. Uh, you have some tricky resets after it hits. The combos are pretty strong. And then you also get, like, three uses of it. And the dash cancels are pretty good, too. So, overall, he gets quite a lot of mileage out of it. Um. I think it's decent. It might be A-. minus. I haven't seen, like, the appropriate stuff to get it to A- minus in my head. But I could buy that it exists, because there's quite a lot of potential to it. It's a decently deep V-Trigger. There's a lot of cool resets out of it. You can create some kind of intri intriguing scenarios. I'm going to put it into B, but if you think it's A- minus or even A, and you know something I don't, I believe you. Nikali. Um, A- minus seems fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what, what doesn't get better? With Nikali V-Triggers, right? <laughs> Hold on. Off the top of my head. You get more damage. You get improved walk speed. You get improved dash speed. Uh, you don't need to charge in cancels. All the special moves get better. Like, the, the the charge move gets hits on the way in. The uppercut does more damage. The uppercut has more range. Uh, the stomp startup gets faster. The super gets better. Um, I think he has Oki on one of his, on one of his throws, back throw, or something like that. Um... It's both of the triggers do that. <laughs> Nikali just gets a shit ton of stuff when he activates. It's nice. None of it's crazy, but all of it's nice. Um, the trigger attacks is different, and VT1 is two bars and not permanent, whereas VT2 is three bars and permanent. Um, I think the trigger attack from VT1 is better ever since they buffed it. It's like a lot better, but um, infinite trigger is also kind of nice. I think Nikali. There are no Nikali players. Um. So it's hard. I don't know what Nikali's pick these days. There's like one Nikali player in the world. But um, I think usually it's VT2 still. But a little bit in my heart of hearts, I think VT1 is the one I would pick if I was a Nikali player. I think it's more interesting and maybe better. But the fact that it's a finite trigger kind of hurts too. It doesn't even last super long, I think, which hurts it. Or maybe I think it, the, the trigger attack might use up some time or something like that. Um, They're probably both A. I'm going to put them both in A. I don't think that's controversial. Might be. Poison BT1. This one's a bit hard to rate. She throws Molotovs. Uh, it makes her special safe on block, which is really good. Um, it gives a launch on hit, and then you get heavy upkick or various other enders. 
EX uh, Amat line. Uh, you get two uses, which is kind of nice. And um, she has some routes that use both Molotovs. One of them won a Capcom Cup. Um, they can a single combo, that is. Uh, the Molotovs, once they land, they create a burning effect, like uh, Dawson BT1. And that does constant damage. And that stacks up in her combos, including the EX Heart Raid on block and the EX Amon line on hit. Like, even in juggles, the fire damage accumulates. Uh, so she gets a lot of extra damage because of that, and it's unscaled damage, which is kind of nice. And then it also makes her anti-airs better. She gets, like, a anti-air uh, shocking heal, and then she gets shocking raid. And then she gets the Molotov, and then she gets a juggle. Uh, sure, I'll do a V-skill tier list. Just give me, like, a week. Yeah, it does harmonize with her kit really well. I put into A. It's, like, S potential. I didn't want to put into S just because item makes it look like S, but it might actually be S, or it might be item. I don't know. Overall, I think it's really good. I'm going to put it to A. But it could be S. could be S. VT2, I'm a believer. I don't think it's bad at all. Um, she gets command grabs. One of them is quick and point blank. The other is slow, but goes like half screen. Um, it's, you got a lot of shock value. People don't usually pick it, uh, so they're not really used to fighting it. She can combo into both the command grabs from her special moves. Like if you do a one line medium into the grab, it does like the short grab, it'll combo. You can combo like heavy Amon line into the far grab, stuff like that. So they're not hard to land. You don't have to land them as grabs. You can land them in combos, and they're pretty strong. Um, they're not bad as combo enders. Um, and she doesn't really mind being reset to neutral, but I don't think you have great Oki on the f forward one. Um, but they do add decent damage to the combos, and it's just free damage on the combo because the combo would just end if you didn't have the grab ender. So, you know, it's quite good. Um... And then the grab, she does have like kind of up-close mix-ups with the EX medium heart rate on block, so adding command grab into that is kind of nice. It adds another dimension to the mix-up, so that's kind of novel. But I think it's not a 5-frame command grab, right? It's like 6. So, <laughs> that hurts a little bit. I think it's still good. I, th I put it in B, but it could be A-. minus. I think it's very decent. I think it's a little committal if you don't just do the combos. And if you do do the combos, it's just a combo editor. It could be A-. minus. Put an A minus. Rashid VT one. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dunk that into A. Um, it's a big tornado on a hit. He gets a juggle on block. He gets a, a really tricky mix up between throw cross ups, fake double cross ups with like the wall jump stuff and like frame traps. Or he can just cash out with a bunch of block damage by doing repeated. Um, what do you call that move? Eagle spike. Uh, you only get one use, but it still has a hit after it lands now. So. You get like two mix-up halves of it most of the time, at least. Um, and you can use it to kind of get screen position too. And then moving through it gives you the souped-up versions of his special moves, which is kind of nice. I think it's a good mix-up between uh, like the VS1 jump as well and then like the VS2 air back step or the overhead. It's really easy for him to op open you up and then if he opens you up. It, the damage isn't super high, but it's nice. And then you get the juggle into heavy mixer or something. But it is a one-and-done trigger. I think it's good. I think it's good. Not horrible. There's a lot of, like, the trigger's like that. It's like, if the opponent successfully blocks, your trigger's just gone in an instant. But it is very tricky. It's hard to block. Um, Rashid BT2. I think I put it into A. Um, might be A. He gets improved special moves. The Whirlwind is extra hits. And um, uh, he gets another a new special where he kicks a different whirlwind that travels along the ground. Um, they raise his damage a lot. His new oh, and the eagle spike gets better. Uh, it raises his damage a lot. Uh, it improves his combo routes. He gets like better combos. Uh, the dive kicks become safer too. Um, good neutral use with that. And then the the raw or the canceled whirlwinds are really good. With the huge blocks done and the eagle spikes are faster and they're safer. They're stronger, and the VS2 stuff is uh, faster, safer, and stronger. Uh, the downside is that it's really hard to kind of preserve. He just runs out if you do basically anything, which hurts it a little bit. But I think it, it improves him quite a lot. You only get like three special moves or four or something, so it's you know it's over pretty quick usually. I thought about putting it to S, because it really helps Rashid's neutral, and Rashid's neutral is already good. I was like between A and S with this one, but I think it's probably A. But if someone said S, you know, maybe. Balrog has good triggers. Um, the BT1, he gets follow-ups out of his dash punches that add damage. 
It makes the dash punch safer, so normally he's like minus four, but if you do the punch follow up, it's like minus one or something. Um, and then you get some juggles after it, like you can do dash low into VS1 punch and then the follow ups. Uh, and then if you're landing it on a grounded opponent, you can do it into VS1 overhead or an empty VS1 low. Uh, so you get a good mix up off of it. The EX dash punch does a lot of damage. Um, all the hits combat a super, and that's pretty strong. And you get a lot of uses out of it. And then you can activate it off of dash punches. So off the top of my head, that's quite a lot of stuff. That's a big plus over VT2. Overall, it's pretty good, I'd say. I put it A. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's... Well, I do think it's pretty amazing. I think it's quite good. It's not crazy. His mix-up isn't, like, insane with it. But it it's, makes him nice and strong and stable. Uh, VT2, we get to command grab. I don't have that much to say about this one. Uh, you can cancel into it. It does decent damage. It does a lot of stun. Uh, having a command grab is really nice for him. The threat of it helps Balrog's mix up. Uh, it's fairly cheap. It's multi-use. A couple successful uses in a row, and you can get a Dizzy. Uh, and that Dizzy will be a really good Dizzy because it'll have low prior scaling, so it can be round-ending if you get a stun with it. I think it's pretty... I think it's probably A. I think they're both A. I think they're both good triggers. It's hard for me to say which one is better. I think they're both strong. Uh, read VT1. I put it B, I think, but maybe it could be A-. minus. I think it's pretty good. You get extra plus frames on all your punches, so you get a lot of new links. You get like SO4 style links, stand strong, stand fierce, like uh, low strong, low fierce, stuff like that. Um, the combo from jump fierce to towards fierce is kind of cool. Uh, you get chargeable fireballs with increased damage, and then the ability to delay them is kind of cool. And then you get faster recovery on them, which is really big, so you can just chuck fireballs like crazy. Um, and they launch, so you can combo like out of them in the corner, and they're decent to land even on neutral. Are they all plus two? I think they're plus. Um, he gets new combo routes, I said. What else? He gets improved super. His super, like, guard breaks. Yeah. Oh, and the fireballs themselves guard break on full charge. So there's some guaranteed setups into that from crush counter sweep, but uh, usually. The super is uh, uh, combo on hit, and then safe on block. Well, it's not even really blockable. Combo on block, that's what I meant to say. On hit, it just knocks down. But you get, like, uh, Guard Crush Super into Light Towards Fierce or something like that, or Walking Strong, I don't remember. And the Super does more damage, too. Uh, the Corner Pressure with Fireballs is insane, because they're plus, and then if they hit, you can combo into DP. And then his stun goes up, too. Um, just talking about all this, I kind of I kind of talked myself into an A-, because this is a very decent trigger, I think. Um, oh, yeah, and the Super does stun damage, too. I think the corner pressure is really crazy. Oh, and the DP gets better as well. I should have mentioned that. The DP gets, like, extra juggle potential. Uh, and also increased damage. And then the EXDP as well. Um, but the extra extra juggle potential on DP is really nice. Because that improves his combos a lot in the corner. And he's already really good in the corner. Probably A-. minus. Hard to say. View VT2 might also be A-. minus. I'm glad I made an A- minus tier. It's really paying off. Like, we're getting a lot of mileage out of it. Um... Yeah, VT1 doesn't last super long. Uh, Ryu gets a parry out of VT2. I think the parry is a little bit of meme these days. I think it's not bad. It's not too hard to land, and it's very rewarding if you land it. It's very rewarding if you land it. But I don't like parries, so I've never thought parries were very good. But, you know, it's, it, it's the counter to certain things. It prevents the opponent from doing things. Um, all of the special moves he has except Tatsu can be comboed into the VT Ender, which does big old thrust, adds a lot of damage. Um, in terms of combos, it's 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 just free damage. You can do like you know donkey kick into just like it, the combo would just end with a donkey kick, but instead you get that tag on hit, which is pretty strong. And then also combos the super, so it's really strong if you land the super. Uh, in neutral, it's mostly just the parry, which you know whatever, or a bigger conversion from like um anti air DP or or a cancel the fireball. Like low strong fireball activate is much more rewarding than just low strong fireball. So that's its neutral use, but um. Overall, it's not super useful in neutral. Uh, but it does add a lot of damage to, like, every combo, which is nice. And the parry is for what it's worth. But Ryu already has a parry with the V-Skill 1. But the parry from VT2 is a lot better than um, V-Skill parry, because you don't need to know what you're parrying, because it only takes one parry, and then you're locking them into the animation. So that's pretty nice. It's like, you know, it's just, it's just a flat upgrade over V-Skill parry, generally. Um, Sagat, 
Oh, uh, what did I... Uh, let's put it in A-. minus. Um, Sagats are hard to place. I don't, I'm not a huge believer. I think they're okay. But I'm not a huge believer. Uh, VT1 is a big old fireball. The damage is good. You can actually do both of them in the same combo. And that does pretty good damage. You can just melt your health bar. And then he gets like a... I think he can combo on the end. He can get his overhead. He can get, I think, a card... Kara... He gets EASDP. I think he might get Kara E as well. I don't remember. Um, but even with one and Kara Tiger Knee and then EX Uppercut, that does like a, a huge amount of damage, which is nice. And then you can activate off of Fireballs, which gives you surprisingly good routes. You can do like Fireball Activate, Dash in Roundhouse, I think. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Um, I don't think it's... Well, I mean, you can just end it instantly if you do both of them. But, you know, it's... Uh, I wish there were more combos into it. You can do like EX Fireball into VT Fireball. But apart from that, you've basically got to do it from normals, I think, right? But Sagat can just do it from like Stamidium Kick if he wants. It's not like it's bad. His Stamidium Kick is good. And going to the trigger cancel is very nice. Um, I put it in B. It could be a bit better. If you're a believer in Sagat, then Sagat's one of the ones I'm not very sure of. Uh, Sagat VT2. You got the rushing knee attack. And then you got like a chargeable, um, like an armored kick. Uh, the kick is pretty good at armoring stuff. I think it's minus and maybe even punishable, but from the range that you can... It has a lot of range, and it's often really hard to punish, if it's punishable at all. Um, you can combo out from his heavies. Uh, it combos really easily from the rushing knee. Um, it's a very decent poke, I think. And so using it for its armor is actually very feasible. I think it's not it's like frame 3 armor. And it doesn't have armor during the swing, I don't think. Um, the rushing knee combos from, like, everything. You can even do it from, like, pokes and stuff. You can do it from, like, low fears or towards, or stem, stem forward, stuff like that. And then once you get the knee, you get, like, I think a juggle or a, a cancel to the, the chargeable armor kick, where if you get the level 2 version, you get a car uppercut from that. And that does really good damage. Uh, you do lose fireball activate, but you've still got EX fireball activate, so it's not horrible. I'm going to put it to B as well. It could be... Both of these could be A-. minus. VT1, I feel like, might be a bit better. Hard for me to say. Sitting up. Alright, a character I play. Cute little Sakura. Um, I've always been a firm believer that VT1 is a bit better, but they're both, like, okay. Now that I've got a... I put them in B, but now that I've got an A-, minus, maybe this one could be an A-, minus and this one could be in B. To demonstrate that one's a bit better. Um, Sakura VT1 improves your fireballs. Uh, the fireballs get an extra hit and they're bigger and they launch the opponent. She gets heavy uppercut, which is her best knockdown for Oki. Um, they're really good on hit and they're really good on block. So like on block, they're all plus and she can just kind of throw them out like YOLO. And if anyone hits, she gets a combo out of it. And they like, you know, fireball speed pokes in neutral. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Hoga shows Hadosho? Hoga show. I think it's kind of a meme. She can just shimmy by walking. She's got like the fastest back walk speed in the game. No need to fucking shimmy with a special move. Um, her combos into it are basically crush counter stuff and then like up fireball, up trigger fireball into Hoga Show, into uppercut, stuff like that. Um, I think VT1 is super good on hit and block, especially in the corner where you've got like the plus frames you can abuse. Uh, doing just random cancels into fireball is really nice. And then the fireball combos themselves are pretty strong, especially with really good corner carry with VS2. Um, I think it's quite a good trigger. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a believer in, um, uh, I don't think either Sakura's triggers are hard to use at all. I'm not a believer in removing Tatsu, making trigger two worse. <laughs> I think it's still really good. I think once you get to Mitten, it's just flat better. Uh, Sakura's, Sakura's uppercut and her Tatsu both get better. The uppercut's meterless and Im invincible on frame one, so, um, she gets true one frame reversal for no bar, and... The super cancels on the second uppercut, so she can, like, do it and then see it's hitting and commit to super, which is kind of nice. It's also really fast. It's like three or four frames. Um, the Tatsu combo... The Tatsus are faster. Well, it's, uh, she just gets replaced by a single Tatsu. It's unsafe on block, but it's really fast. It comes from her light normals, and you can rock and frame it from the medium kick. And then it leads to either B skill, and that has really good conversions for both corner carry and damage. It's, like, super... And even repositioning for VS2. Well, repositioning for either of them, really. Um, it's better for combos than VT1, but it's not as good in neutral. The main thing it gives you in neutral is just, um, like, raw buttons buffered into the improved Tatsu, 
which is very rewarding, but not a crazy thing in neutral. And then having stronger confirms from her line normals is good, because I would say for Sakura, having good line normals is one of her main features, particularly stand like kick. So being able to do stand jab, stand like kick, like the Tatsu, and the combo from that is really nice. Yeah, but it's usually just damage, whereas VT1 actually has some neutral use. And neutral use is generally more important than damage. Not always. I think both of them are similarly viable, but I put put VT1 in A, A minus. Um, oh, we're really getting there. This final stretch. Seth, I think, has good triggers. I th I put VT1 in A. I don't know if it's truly A. I like it, but it might be A minus. Uh, all of Seth's special moves get an optional trigger follow up. Uh, all of them add a lot of damage. And then the one from the dive kick and the one from the spin kick actually allow for a follow up, which is kind of cool. Even further increases the damage. You get like the spin kick and then you get the trigger follow up and you get, you know, rapid punch into the rapid punch follow up. You'd suddenly do in a ton of damage on a combo that would have ended before. Um, you get a lot of uses for the trigger. And it also, there's a, a trigger cancel from every single stealable move Seth has, I think, or maybe all but one if you can't do a follow up from like Ibuki's or something like that. Uh, it also improves the damage of the critical art, which is kind of cool, um, but not a huge deal. Most of the neutral use it has is just making rapid punch like plus, but you're not even point blank. So uh, it, the big the big hit for it is that it offers very little neutral, I think. So maybe it's a minus. I put it in a. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool trigger, so I'll put it in a. But it might be a minus. Um, but the damage it adds is really nice. A lot of combos get a lot bigger. Uh, VT2 I put in S, and I don't think anyone complained about that. I thought someone might. I think it's really good. I'm a believer. I think of all, like, the stationary, like, fireball-style uh, triggers, not stationary, the, the slow-moving fireball-style triggers, it moves. Um, this is probably the one I think is the best. He, he Seth makes a giant orb he can steer, and then uh, it's very easy to force the opponent to block it by doing it from Seth's TC. And then you've got routes to punish V-reversal. You've got routes to punish reversal uppercuts. You can, like, Seth can eat the V-reversal or eat the reversal uppercut and then still, like, combo the trade once the fireball explodes. Um, the explosion hitting has massive hit stun and block stun. And Seth has those trade combos. Uh, it does a lot of chip. You've got, like, low overhead mix-ups with, like, the towards runouts, the low runouts, stuff like that. Um, okay, that makes me feel good that <laughs> other people are believers too. I, th I think it's pretty scary. And the fact it's really hard to waste is really a big deal. Like he can he, he can just like steer it back into you stuff like that. Um, I think it's I think it's one of the best. It might be nerfed by B shift a bit, but I think it's one of the best triggers in the game. It's kind of more forcing than a lot of the other projectile triggers, which hurts it a little bit. Like you have to, you, it's hard to like like. Mix the opponent up and then still get more trigger use out of it. Like, once you throw the opponent out of you can still get, like, trigger meaty stuff. I don't know. Uh, Dawson BT1. I think I put this in B initially. It might be A, retrospectively. I think it might be A. I'm not even going to put an A minus. I'm going to put an A. Uh, Dawson breathes a flame carpet under the opponent. And then if it hits, he gets a juggle. And if you stand on the carpet after it's there, it does constant wide damage. Um, Dawson is super good at removing white health from the opponent with the instant overhead in the low, or like it's really easy to just run into normals while trying to approach him and you just lose all your white health. And then if you're trying to get out of the flame carpet, um, it's super easy to run into a like a normal. Or like, you know, just Dalsim gets screen positioning. Like even if you're just holding back and just trying to get away, uh, Dalsim can walk himself out of the corner, stuff like that. So that's really nice. I think I underrated it. Or it's not on the thing. Um... What else? Oh, it gives him combos. It's not a huge deal, but it gives him combos where he normally doesn't have any like stuff from like close strong or like low forward. Low forward is kind of good to have a to have a trigger cancel out of. Um, it basically always does something. Trigger one can't do nothing. You know what I mean? I think that's really nice. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to do about it. The the real the real estate is really important for Dalsim. I think that's a big deal. Is if you put up the carpet and they walk away and you get out of the corner, that's a big deal. Dalsim hates being cornered. Um, BT two. I think I put it in A. I don't remember. I think it's A. He blows a fireball. 
And then the fireball does very little damage, but if you successfully Yoga Flames the fireball, it shoots a, a pretty good damage slow traveling fireball that you basically most characters just have to respect it especially for the angles it can travel at there's just no there's nothing most characters can do except like block it and then every time dalsam yoga flames it it like restores and he can like push you out of it or like mix it up makes you up right as it's about to hit uh he can throw you and then yoga yoga gale and make you still have to deal with it um and he gets two of them he gets two of them yeah and he can also follow it to get out of the corner he can get like good screen positioning with it, even if he doesn't get it to do any damage. And then he gets surprise cross-ups with instant teleport before it hits. Or you can just bully the opponent, get some chip, or get a throw, or something like that. Uh, the second one's a little bit hard to get up, but usually usually you can find a way if you're just patient. But you could maybe get hit while trying to blow a second one, depending on how greedy you are. Um, but you get two, which is a big deal. Probably A. Probably A level. Um, I think I put Urian VT1 and S. It could have been nerfed by V-Shift. I have fought Urian since the patch and used V-Shift fairly effectively against it. Um, so I think it, I think V-Shift is good against it, but I don't know if there's anti-V-Shift stuff now. Um, all right, everything I just said about Seth VT2, it, you're, I lied, v, Urian VT2 is better, actually. I forgot. Um, you get the crazy combos in the corner or mid-screen, bouncing them off the mirror and stuff. You get resets. Uh into like throw if you want them and then the th you can combo out of the throw into like low uh strong or whatever into or into super even um it's super easy to get it behind someone on block with just like ex tackle activate or whatever and then you get like a forced or like meaties you get like a forced the opponent has to hold like two mix-ups where you hit them and then they get bounced back into you by the mirror and then they have to deal with another mix-up or if yurian throws you you get comboed from the throw uh yeah grab into super is pretty crazy uh, they nerfed that, I think. <laughs> they made it so you get more scaling on combo starting from throw, and that did affect that. Uh, but it's still really good. Uh, but because of that, because his his mix-up is uh, coming from throw there, well, one of the mix-ups is coming from throw, but um, uh, the throw is actually really damaging if you've got the super. And even if you don't have the super, you get the like combo. So like that's actually pretty scary, I think. Throw, is, throw being stronger also makes the whole mix-up stronger. Um, and then you've got the stuff in the corner with like the high mirror where the opponent can't stand into it and if they throw tech they stand into it and stuff like that you've got like on hit you've got really strong combos with like normal mirror hit and then headbutt mirror hit crutch fears you know stuff like that it's like super rewarding on hit it's super rewarding in neutral uh, and there's a lot of creativity possible with it and it's good in the corner and mid screen I got nothing bad to say but I think it's S I think it's worse than Worse than ever since they added B shift, but I still think it's S. You're in BT2. I might have had it in A, or I might have had it in B. I don't remember. I think it's B. I like reevaluated. It might be might be A minus or something. I'm gonna put it in B. Um. It has a um. Guard break. If you fully charge it, it's a tackle armor tackle third frame armor, and if it goes pretty far and you get a combo out of it, and then if it uh. If you fully charge it, it guard breaks. The guard break is not super good, um, but the you can combo into it from a lot of stuff. Just like button, like you know, low forward tackle or something works. But then you can also do like crutch fierce into like you know tackle with some charging or whatever. Um, so it powers up your combos. The armor is decent neutral, and you get three uses, which is kind of nice. Yeah, V shift fucks up anything that's like full charge for armor. Um, it doesn't power up your combos a lot. Probably B. It's not horrible. It's not great. Sakura VT2 might be an A minus. Looking at some of the B triggers, Sakura might be better than them. Might be A minus. Uh, Zeku, I put them in B before, but now that I have an A minus, I'll put them both in A minus. They're not the same at all. I'm just putting them both on there. Um, some people say these are really strong. Some people say they're really weak. It's hard to say. Uh, VT1. He does like a dash cancel into chaining normals, and then he gets like a, a unique ender that's minus two, and also super cancels. Uh, with super, the combos are strong, and actually, now that I say that, the combos are just strong anyway. Like, not even with super. <laughs> uh, you have some really cool chip kill stuff because it does quite a lot of chip with the white damage, and then the ender, and then the super cancel. It's all a tree block string. Uh, you can confirm it from a lot of buttons, even like single hit confirms from like low forward and stuff. So, it makes his pokes really good. And it's safe on block no matter what you do from it. 
Um, the downside is that it's one and done. For a two-bar trigger, that's not horrible, but I think that hurts it a bit. Um, VT2? Uh, VT1 might be A-, minus. I don't know. I feel like some people are going to say A, and some people are going to say like B. And it's just like, I don't know, it's putting an A-, minus seems like I dodge it, but I don't think it's... I think very few people will say A-, minus. they'll either say A or B, you know? Either people think it's good or people think it's mediocre. Um, VT2, uh, he does an anti-air uppercut, and then a little form shift, like his Visco 1. Uh, the damage is pretty good, and you get to optionally reposition, just like Visco 1. And it combos from all the special moves, so you can just donk it at the back of every single combo. Um, it's super unsafe on block, which really hurts its neutral use. But you can single hit confirm it from some of his pokes, so that's possible. And then you can also like combo it from his special moves, so it's not hard to land. Uh, you can use it as an anti air. You can use it as an anti fireball. So a lot of neutral use from that. Forget what I said about saying it had poor neutral use. Um, it's got good neutral use for those two. So it it becomes like a based on the matchup, I think. Um, they're both they're both pretty good for two bar triggers. If you think they're a, they're they're a. These ones are like these ones are like somewhere we need like a new tier that's between A minus and A, but I can't even think of what to call that, so I can't just put it in. Um. All right, we made it to the to the final season. I can no longer put things on the list, so you'll just have to pretend that I'm putting things on the list. Dan VT one. Uh, I think C. Dan throws a big fireball at the opponent that he can come out of. How good Oaken. Uh, it's not super damaging, you, even with the combos into and out of it. It does improve his 1-bar damage a bit, but usually you're not really thinking about it for the combos. Usually it's more for like comboing out of a poke or something you wouldn't normally be able to combo out of. Um, it's 1-bar, which is a blessing and a curse. Like You get it so fast that you can get 3 or 4 of them in a round, and that's really good. But the problem is if you eat like a jumping combo or a, a super, you just build two V-bars in one go normally. And if you only have a one-bar trigger, that's just meter that you never get. And that's there's a lot of really annoying stuff about that. Um, like you don't get to... Uh, um, you don't get to V-shift or V-reverse as easily with a one-bar trigger. Uh, and also with Dan, Dan's V-skills build V-meter for the opponent. So... Combine the fact that he can't store V meter easily and the fact that he builds V meter for the opponent, you're just gonna fall behind in V meter like really easily with Dan VT one I think. Um, it does help his VS two confirms a bit. Like sometimes you can get like stand fierce VS two stand fierce and there would be no combo there, but then you get like VT one. You know stuff like that is kind of good. But I think it's probably B minus on this tier list, which is our pretend name for C. Probably a C trigger, maybe. No, I think probably a C trigger. I think it's not. I'm not impressed by it. I don't like the one bar. I think it's not like. <laughs> I think it's. I think one bar is not a not an objective improvement. Um, VT two is solidly B. I think. Probably not A minus. Probably just B. Um, it buffs his fireballs and uppercut. Uh, it's not a bad trigger. It's very combo friendly. The I think the frame one invincibility on uppercut. I think you get that. And then you have a delayed super cancel like Sakura, which is kind of cool. Uh, the fireball launches, it's safe, it's plus, I think. And you can also do the not just frame version for a combo extension because it doesn't knock down. So you can do like button into non just frame fireball into stand short. I've never seen someone do that. I just know it's possible. I've never seen someone do it. Um, the combos are decently strong. It's not super combo friendly. Or like his combos, his, his, it doesn't change his neutral too much. You get the fireball cancels, and that's about it. And then in terms of combos, it's mostly just about going into the the improved fireball, and then the improved uppercut, or like going into ex Denkyaku and then the improved fireball, and then the improved uppercut, stuff like that. And then you can end that in super. So it's pretty strong, but it's not crazy. It's just an okay trigger. So for Dan, it's VT1 C and VT2 B. Um, Rose, I kind of donked them into B for both of them before, but I think actually they might be A when I think about how much better of a character she becomes with them. It might be B. They both have a serious downside each. Um, Rose VT1, she gets a teleport, and she can cancel into it from her fireballs. It's not... It's pretty good even for a neutral. Like, she can use it to move, like Nash, but it's slower and maybe not quite so freeform. Um, fireball teleport at certain ranges is a cross-up, which is really fucking obnoxious. Can create really tricky scenarios for the opponent. 
Um, it's decent for just increasing damage, including for like the one bar stuff off of like the EX Soul Throw or um, EX Fireball. Uh, it's really hard for me to choose between A and B for that one. Okay, it's A minus, maybe. Uh, you think A? You think A? Okay, maybe A. That's a hard call for me. Now that I have A minus, I'd put it in A minus, but it could be A. Two uses is kind of nice, and it is it is. Uh, I don't know. It helps you neutral somewhat. Might be good. Rose VT2, she gets a bunch of after images which struggle the opponent. My big problem with this one is that it only lasts 5 seconds. So it's really hard to get a combo with it other than the combo that you started like the combo with, you know. Um, I don't know, go watch the video again. Go rewind. I don't want to explain it. Um It's got really crazy block strings for Rose VT2. You can do like just a continuous true block string. You get like really good links out of it. You get really good momentum out of it, I think. You get a nice mix-up. She's almost guaranteed... Like, she is just guaranteed damage on block, because you just get a lot of chip. And then, uh... You know, you get a very long cor corner carry sequence. Um... But it only lasts five seconds, and you can't really get two mix-ups out of it, which means that if you get, like, an opening with it, into, like... If you get, like, button into activate, you can't, like... <laughs> you've got to just turn out the combo. You can't deliberately drop the combo and then, like you know, reset the... Well, you can reset the opponent, but you're very unlikely to get significant damage out of it because your trigger is going to be running out. So your trigger activation scaling is often tied to your punish, which kind of sucks. Um, it could be ruined by a reversal if you're not careful. Uh, the cool thing about the short duration and how much control you have during the combo means getting two per round is very possible. Um, and the combo damage from it is decent. It's not great. It's decent. It's workable. Uh, but like the the combos from slide and stuff, it's it's easy to get a. Uh, it's like it's like a Aura VT2 in that you can kind of get a hit and then combo out of it pretty reliably, but it's so much less rewarding. It's okay, it might be A, it might be A minus. I usually think Rose VT1 is better. I think in my heart of hearts, I think Rose VT1 is either A or A minus, and Rose VT2 is just A minus. Um. Oro VT1, Oro grabs the opponent. You got a ground version, you got an air version. The ground version's a true command grab. It's kind of nice for his mix-up. Uh, you can also cancel either version uh, from his special moves. So you can do like uh, the crescent kick into the ground one, or like the uppercut into the air one, stuff like that. You get three uses, which is kind of cool. Uh, you lose points because the damage and Oki aren't even that spectacular. Even like like for something like Alex VT2, you get momentum on all your stuff, but like I don't even think you get it momentum from or OBT1 follow-ups. Um, and that would be nice. So they should have made that like the difference maker. Um, but a lot of Aura's combos are actually pretty scaled. Like if you just do chicken combo, like, you know, strong uh, chick uh, chicken scratch, strong chicken scratch uppercut, and then end in BT1, it doesn't add that much damage. You get a lot of scale scaling from a lot of Aura stuff. So that hurts it a lot too. But you do have stuff like, you know, low forward, light, light, crescent kick into BT1. Can be kind of cool. It's kind of uninteresting, is the thing. I don't think it's horrible. I put it C, but it's it's. I don't think it's D, but it's not very good. Um, or VT two serious candidate for game's best trigger. Uh, all of his attacks are followed by a series of stone hits. The hit stun is fucking huge. Uh, any errant hit just leads to a whole combo. Every poke becomes thirty damage, thirty percent of the opponent's life. Um, it's actually really easy to preserve too. Like you think because any button he presses uses trigger time, uh, it would you would just be forced to use it all in one go. But you can throw fireballs or VS one without consuming any trigger time, and Oro has a surprisingly great neutral game with just those two things. So that's crazy. Um, any combo can be turned into a reset. You've got really good synergy with incendiary stomp or four medium kick to blow up throw attacks. But most opponents, most good opponents, I shouldn't say most opponents because most people do press. Um, most good opponents just allow themselves to get thrown. But the trigger time lasts a really long time if Oro's not pressing. So he can throw the opponent like three times in a row and still have trigger up, which is really good. And trigger lasts really long if you're not going for buttons. Um, there's also some really tricky cross-up and reset stuff. Like uh, you can do like, um, uh, like I think low forward, low strong, and then like a... a uh, chicken scratch that goes over the opponent's head and the stomps hit or rather the stones hit behind the opponent stuff like that you get some weird weird stuff where the stones hit delayed 
uh, on the other side, people block wrong as you pass over the opponent's head. And then, um, what else? Oh yeah, the activation route into it from Crescent Kick is super good. It's very easy to just get it on hit. And then the combos are really strong, and then you can potentially end in super, and you can go for resets at any moment. It's so good. It's so fucking good, and it lasts forever. Yeah, it's it's just insane. And like, yeah, his max damage punish combos, especially in the corner, but even in general, his max damage punish combos just fuck the opponent up. You just get like two round houses, then a jump in, then stuff. Um... Best, may, uh, easy S tier. Or a BT1 C tier, or a BT2 S tier. Akira, BT1, A minus. I put it in B earlier, but A minus. Now that I have an A minus, it's easy to put into the A minus. Some people might say A. Akira calls Daigo, and Daigo lands on the opponent, and um, then does a follow up hit. Uh, it's very similar to Nadeshko, except the, it crumples the opponent, which makes more optimized combos a bit easier, and it does more damage anyway. And Akira's mix-up isn't as pure as Mika's, but she still has enough stuff to get a mix-up after Daigo lands. You can do, like, um, she's got a decent overhead and some crossover stuff on the second hit. So you can make some hard-to-block bulls with that. It's I, I think it loses points a little bit for being a one-and-done. But um, uh, I think A- minus and potentially A. I was I was high to put it in B. It's probably A. Probably A-. minus, Maybe A. Um... Akira VT2, I put in B, and it might actually be B. Might be A minus. She gets a stance with some follow ups. Uh, you've got like a launching follow up that's that's good for anti air and anti fireball stuff, and it has high minimum scaling, so you can do it after long juggles, maybe from her VSD or whatever. Uh, you've got easy confirms into the other ones from like her EXs or her buttons. Uh, you got a lot of neutral use because one of them's plus on block, and then you get a decent amount of use out of it because you got um, like three stance uses, I think. So, I think maybe B, maybe A-. minus. I think it's worse, but I don't think it's way worse. Could be better. Kind of untapped. Laura so far, or Oro, would be the biggest gap. I think they're tied. B- minus versus S. Probably Oro, realistically. Because I... Th I don't know. <laughs> it depends on whether you believe in... In Rockman, what he said about Laura. Luke, we're on our last character. Um, Luke VT1, he throws some rapid fireballs. It's very fast, it's hard to react to. The range is good, goes like full screen. Uh, it's not bad at all as a random option for Fireball Wars, because it'll punish other fireballs, it'll go through them really quick. Um, uh, no, I put it in D initially. <laughs> Uh, you get decently powerful combos from Luke VT1. They're not super strong, but they're decently strong, especially after like EX fire, uh, fireball, EX regular fireball into trigger fireball is pretty pretty strong. Um, I put it into A. I think some people wanted me to move it into S. I've never. I think it's pretty good. I'm a bit surprised that people would say it's S. The thing that I think might push it into S is that Luke with his triggers builds trigger time over time instead of losing it, and it does it for both triggers. So it's easy to get extra uses if you're kind of successful in neutral. Um, and Luke can stall pretty easily. So it's easy to get an extra use out of it. But I don't think the uses are like super crazy. Usually you just get some chip. But, you know, free chip is nice too. Um, so it's easy to use fast if you want to use it fast and maybe get two per round. But it's also really, it's very possible to stall and get extra uses out of it. And then if you land hits, you also get more trigger time. But if you get hit, you lose trigger time. So... Uh, you could get a lot of extra trigger uses, but you could get fewer. Um, I think Luke is top one for reasons unrelated to his triggers, if I'm being honest. I think his triggers, are they improve him, but I think that they're not crazy. I think they're both just good. I put it in A. Um, I don't think it's S. Um, Luke VT2. I think I put it into B. But it's probably A minus now that I have an A minus, because it has that trigger restoring thing, which is really nice. But it's not as zoning oriented as VT1, so getting the time back is a little bit harder. Uh, he can cancel his knuckles into more knuckles. It improves his combo damage in basically every combo, because most of Luke's combos go into the knuckles, and then you can do you know different ones. Um, you can situationally spend two per combo. You can do like knuckle knuckle into knuckle knuckle. Um, it makes some of his unsafe knuckle safe. Maybe like heavy knuckle cancel, but I think there's a window. Uh, it gives him some combos out of heavy knuckle situationally. Um, and then it has the regenerating trigger. 
Probably a minus. I think. So just a recap on the DLC characters. I had Dan VT one C, Dan VT two B, Rose VT one A, Rose VT two A minus, right? Was that it? Aura VT one C, Aura VT two S, Akira VT one A minus, I think, right? Akira VT Akira VT two. What did I say for that one? Did I say B or did I say A minus? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, Luke VT one A, Luke VT. BT two A minus. I think it's I think it's all good. And then the rest of it is just this graph I made. Ooh, I've been talking for a long time. Two hours forty two minutes. I'm probably gonna cut the YouTube video here so anyone who watched it on YouTube, you know. <laughs> Thanks for making me do all that work. It only took me two hours to make this video, but I did have to endure Twitter, so you know. I think I think the list we came out with after the Twitter editing, after the further opinions from other people, was very helpful. I think this is a better list than my first one. But I don't. I still think it's very subjective. I think someone else's list could be completely different to this. And once again, nothing's ordered within the tiers, so don't freak out. All right, yeah, I'll do a V-Skill ranking, I guess, just because it's easy to make. We'll see how this one does on YouTube. We'll see if people are just, like, arguing all the time or whether there's actual discussion. And we'll see if anyone calls me dumb. Um, I'm going to go lie down. I don't want to stream anything today. <laughs> I got studying to do. I got to relax. I was at the hospital for fucking eight hours today. I didn't have to do anything harder. What did I do today? Let me consult my notepad. Chest x-ray portable. 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 We call that a portable run right there. I did seven in a row. Um... I did a toe fifth. Anyone know which toe is the fifth toe? First person to get it right, I will do nothing. Three views of the fifth toe. I did an FLUGI, that's fluoroscopy of an upper gastro. It is the pinky! Correct. I did a... Well, I didn't do it, I watched it. <laughs> I did a right hand, three view. Um, I did two more chest x-rays that were not portable, so they were two view. And then I watched a small bowel series, which is where they inject, well, normally barium, but this lady had a possible uh, ulceration with possible uh, perforation. So you're not supposed to use barium anytime that there's a, a, a hole, basically. So uh, we were using some kind of iodine stuff, and uh, she was taking it through a nasogastric tube, which she just had in her nose, and she was just conscious and awake and fucking, you know, fine chatting with us while this fucking tube in her nose it was a little bit like you know i was like are you okay um she was very she was a very good patient she was just uh, we kept on asking her stuff like oh you want a warm blanket or stuff like that she's like no i'm fine I was like, are you bored no i'm okay stuff like that she was very nice um that was it that's all the stuff i did today i did that over an eight hour shift the chest x-ray portable run where i did the seven chest x-rays uh took like the first two hours, well, the first hour and a half. I didn't do it right away. I, it only took an hour. I did it like 30 minutes after I showed up. And then I was an hour and a half in my shift when I was over. And then after that, there were only six more things. So it was mostly just me chilling. That being said, philosophy studies take a long time. The UGI took 40 minutes and the small bowel took 30. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to bed. <laughs>